Take a moment right here Feeling like it's out gear Driving towards the sun With a rose and a gun Feel the wind in my hair Going nowhere I swear Like an outlaw on the run Dangerous but it's so fun Running, running Told my boss that I'm done Had no luck with my mom Say what will you do with your life You know it's hard to survive A cigar in my mouth Maybe guilty but proud Now I'm an outlaw on the run Dangerous but it's so fun Running, running
Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Risen Esports and, of course, the Dominate League. It's your caster here, Eric Desirux Botran, joining me on the desk, my long lost brother. It is Michael the Doctor Parati. And, Doc, how you doing today? It's been a long time, man. Oh, I'm doing amazing. We're here on a Risen desk, hearkening back to the good old days of early NA Amateur League of Legends, and <laughs> it can't get much better than that. We have a banger of a best of three coming up from here today between the uh, Ben. Banners Appeals? No, sorry. <laughs> Brotherhood Appeal. The Brotherhood Appeals Academy uh, going up against Durham Lords Esports. And they're already in the draft phase, Deathstrokes. They are ready to get started. Yeah, bans already coming out. A lot of attention towards that jungle pool as well as the top lane. Kha'Zix and Udi are taken off the map as well as Camille and Renekton. So top side focus for both of these squads thus far. Yeah, I mean, the Renekton just simply makes sense. It's... Uh, the top laner here uh, for BOP, 91 games played already this season with a 55% win rate. That is definitely not something you want to be dealing with right now in, you know, this top carry type of, you know, world we live in right now. So <laughs> definitely get that out of here. Follow it up with a couple jungle bands like the Udyr and the Kha'Zix and just kind of force something a little bit more uncomfortable out of the pick here. So it's a good thing. It means the Brotherhood have done their homework, which... They need to. This is an undefeated team coming in with uh, DLE going 2-0, not even losing a single game within their series thus far. Brotherhood, however, 1-1 one, one apiece. The first lock is going to be the Kai'Sa going with the ADC roll. Yeah, I mean, so far, you know, we're only three weeks in, so the score's not too, too different, but it will continue to add up quite quickly as if the teams can't get a whole grip early on. Kai'Sa, absolutely insane this patch as well. I know they've nerfed her a little bit, but you really can't get much better of an AD carry. I mean, maybe if you get like a really great Vayne player, you're, you know, that much better. But Kai'Sa, top notch right now, definitely first pickable. So, however, as you may have noticed, Seraphine falling through the cracks and that champion is the definition of broken right now there is just not much she can't do yeah and you can flex it into so many different roles as well everything but the jungle pretty much uh yone gets locked in with that that has to be going towards random capitals he's the only one on the team that likes to play it can't imagine seeing it flexed a little bit too much but already two strong response picks yeah, and I mean, we did see Bwipo play, you know, the Yone top yesterday. It got absolutely dumpstered, but it, it's there. The possibility could be there. Plus, who knows? Maybe Durham Lords are just better than Whippo. It's definitely possible. <laughs> and look at this. BOP picking up the Echo. Another kind of strong flex pick. It has been seen in the jungle recently. Um, I do think overall it's a better mid pick right now currently, and it does pretty well into the Yone. Um, you can be 
quite punishing with the electrocute procs and everything that goes along with that plus you then have that crazy late game split push potential i would like to see them combo this with a really strong ganking jungler however if that is actually the case um because then you can really start punishing the yonai who does not have any escapes once that flash is blown but it's gonna be the leblanc mid instead yeah, instead, happy taking the LeBlanc, and even though LeBlanc's not the strongest thing in the middle right now, it's very, very powerful when it's left unchecked, and when it's able to get those kills, you can start roaming around, find those assassinations, and overall, you're kind of seeing that composition on the side of the Brotherhood Appeal. It's about assassinations, it's about skirmish, it is about fighting, and a lot of this revolves around the mid game. Once you get those bonuses, once you get the gold scaling around there, it's a lot of disorienting uh, things you have to put up with. The killer instinct, the distortions. No, don't even mind the chrono break, but the response <laughs> out of DLE is going to be Senna. Yeah, and I do love the Senna pick. She's incredibly strong right now. I love that they're pairing her with that Enchanter. I think that's something that is going to start becoming a little bit more meta is some of these more double Enchanter bot lanes um, because we all know Grievous Wounds exists, but it, I don't think it's really in that great of a spot now, especially when you have champions like Yone who can just out heal it just straight up with one item. So getting these double Enchanter bot lanes, Senna on top of being that healer and that CCer just has a buttload of damage combining with that Kraken Slayer. It's hard to deal with as well because her range just gets so incredibly long. Um, we've typically been seeing it as the Fasting Senna or the Farm Kench as some may know it as. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the Kench pick itself so I do like that they've comboed it here with the Seraphine. That is going to be a really hard lane to deal with depending on what um, BOP can pick up for a support. The thing is there are a lot of beefy supports still left over. Uh, the Nautilus is something that does come to mind for Brotherhood of Pills, specifically Clayson, something he's able to play. Thresh still on the table as well. And usually when you do grab a support for Kaisa, you grab something that's a little bit aggressive, something like the Alistair that allows you to engage and follow up with that duo. But one more band comes out, Kassadin will be the last band. Counterpick will go over to DLE on the red side. So I think an amazing pick here uh, for BOP support-wise would actually be Rel, if you think about it. It's got that hard mm. crowd control that you're looking for in the supportive role with the Kai'Sa. It has the shield break, which is actually massive heading into Senna, Seraphine, Yone. All of those champions can do some really nice healing. Senna doesn't quite have the shielding uh, unless she goes like overheal or something like that, which I don't think we're going to see. But at any point where the Seraphine comes in and gets that shield down, gets that healing down, you just break right through it. Um, I know the Serpent Fang weapon, or item, excuse me, is going to start getting some buffs in the next patch as well. So even though it's pretty good now, especially on Kai'Sa, I do imagine that that will start coming out a lot more in the next patch or so. Um, and Durham, they're going to pick up that Olaf there. They're going to be trying to get some very aggressive jungling going on, and that is going to be problematic for Echo. Echo does not clear exceptionally fast right now until he gets a couple back off but Olaf is just going to be able to get through the jungle into these lanes and just be causing all kinds of havoc. Now we're getting some information in. Uh, not sure if it's verified or not but apparently the LeBlanc was supposed to be Leona. We'll get a double check on that in just a bit but that would make a little bit more sense for the composition drafted by Brotherhood Appeal. Still one more pick to go out for Durham and they're going to be happy grabbing the Leona so you do get some team fight ability Leona excuse me Oriana you do get some team fight ability being able to grab the Oriana um not much of a deliverance system you do have the Yone who can get you in there but overall it should be just control and priority over the mid lane uh once we do figure out what that mid lane pick is going to be and uh just get some team fighting going really yeah, this is actually just overall a really kind of crazy draft from both sides because if the LeBlanc is the Leo pick, which I, I did see it was in chat for a second, um, then it means that the full composition for, for BOP here is going to be Malphite top, Echo jungle, uh, Tristana mid, and then Kaisa Leona bottom lane, which is really strong it's a bit different because echo like i said he's he's in the jungle not his best position in my opinion but it does create some lots of you know misdirection and things like that could be kind of problematic to deal with they have a really strong team fight composition with the double 80 carries plus the double hard engages of the malphite and the leona so it's, it's a pretty strong composition all said and done i think the jungler could be stronger but i i don't want to harp on that too too much whereas looking over the side of durham they have yone top olaf jungle oriana mid senna seraphine bottom lane which 
that is chaotic. <laughs> there is so <laughs> much going on there. Um, I, I mean, I talked about Whoopo's Yone top yesterday into Tank Gragas. It did not go the way they wanted, but I think the matchup itself here is actually still kind of Malphite favored even more so than the Gragas uh, ended up doing just because the Malphite has a lot more concentrated poke there with that uh, Seismic Shard. He's just overall tanky. He's going to be able to build so much armor here since their main magic component is in mid and support. So they almost need never are going to be a problem for Malphite in the mid game. So he can just stack armor, pick up a Bramble Vest first item, pick up some plated steel caps after that, and just be unkillable between the Olaf and the, the Yone. But the thing is, uh, for DLE, if they are able to get some priority early, it works really well for the Olaf. Olaf has great neutral objective yeah. control. He just needs the priority from his lanes to be able to do that. That being said, though... It's kind of a tricky spot for him because you want that control to be over towards the bot side where you can get those early drakes and start cashing in on those early. But mm -hmm. it's more top side oriented if you are looking at DLE's composition. Um, I, the, the Seraphine Senna, of course, like it's a strong duo and all, but it's still against Akaisa Leona, which is going to be looking to engage and go hard the moment they're able to get level two. So, oh, yeah. yeah, I, I, I really like the Olaf pick as a whole but it does scare me as to where it's going to be positioned where they want to find their power on the map yeah and you know part of the problem here is like you said the priority in these you know upper half of the lanes mm -hmm. can be kind of skewed uh, Oriana great wave clear the dissonance command attack great stuff there allowing her to roam constantly but they picked it into a Tristana surprisingly enough you know is going to have that explosive shot is going to be able to pick up a ton of attack speed early on and that is hard push like everybody who's ever played Tristana on the bot lane knows how hard pushing the Tristana can be and how bonkers she is at taking those towers so there is going to be a very big battle there for priority and Tristana is incredibly safe too having that rocket jump able to get out of danger as soon as the Olaf comes in and because of the way Olaf Oriana work the only way for them to interrupt the rocket jump is with a perfectly timed shockwave so I, I do fear for the Oriana there uh famous who is going to have their work cut out for them to try and push the wave in and assist the Olaf and top lane is just so interesting to me because I have an idea of how it's supposed to go in my head, and it's up to Sheepman and Atiz to really make that happen. But Yone, Yone can be quite gross. I mean, getting that Immortal Shield bow, getting the Conqueror stacks, and he's just nigh unkillable. We'll have to see if that's how that pans out, though. We will have to see, and we will see in just a moment. We're going to throw over to a short break while we load into the Rift. Be sure to stay tuned. Matchup of Brotherhood Appeal versus the Durham Lord Esports will be beginning in just a moment. We'll be right back.
Now ready to hit back onto the rift. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Risen Esports Dominate League. Brotherhood Appeal versus Durham Lords Esports. And very simple start right here, just dividing the rift, but getting into these compositions. I, I gotta like the mid game for Brotherhood because it is a lot of skirmish once you do have that Leona. And, you know, the Malphite, of course, it can sustain. You were talking about all that armor, armor it can build. It can sustain all the way up until the mid game, into the late game. It doesn't need to do well. All it needs to do is have a kit, press R, and engage fights. So I, I, I overall just like what you can get in the mid game for Brotherhood. Yeah, I think the composition overall is quite strong, uh, especially for that mid game, because once everybody hits six to 11, you know, they're going to have access to these really long range engage type ultimates. Uh, you know, King Joe is going to be able to rejoin any fight at any point with the killer instinct to just really try and execute there onto Vic or Clayson who are not going to be the tankiest members. So if they get hit by, you know, the parallel convergence, the unstoppable force, or even just the, you know, the solar flare, they are just going to get annihilated and it's already kind of starting. I do love the amount of damage that just came out of King Joe there with the, the Halo Blades. Yeah, an instant trade coming in from King Joe. Knowing what that champion can bring once he's able to bring it. And you can already see the trades coming in once again. But this time, Joe, not realizing his range. He will get punished for just that, falling to just about 200 health after a great little start. Yeah, and that damage is forever, right? He's popping the health potion already. Yeah, he's got biscuits in the back foot. But it's not going to be like the Seraphine Santa who do have healing directly into the kit. Leona, no heal, just does damage, so... This could be a problem if they try and get another awkward trade going on. And you can already kind of see the way the wave is set up. It's very sided onto DLE, but they can just kind of hang out. They don't need to really get much going. They're down a level, but because they're so close to the tower, there's no real engage threat coming in from the side of DOP just yet. One thing I'd be worried about if you are DLE, uh, if you are a DLE fan more like, is watching the pathing that's coming out of Hectic. He is going from his red buff to his blue side. And with that, that means he'll be going for that bottom side scuttle. And you're seeing the priority come out of Bop. They have it in the mid lane. They have it in the bot lane. If he does try and contest for that scuttle, those lanes can react to Hectic before Hectic's allies can back him up. So you can be in a tough spot here if he's not quick enough. Yeah, you know, we're looking at this mid lane a little bit where, you know, you already saw the jump in there. Uh, from random capitals and it does a lot of damage right it's this level two tristana is going to be able to join quite nicely um as we do see a bit of an engage yeah zenith blade comes out you do get the stun but he can't get close enough for the stun of his own on the echo so returning fire will be the bot lane of dle as they get the better of that trade off a gank that was initiated from duricos yeah being able to snare up the echo there even though the parallel convergence is a bit short, still means you don't get any of that damage. You know, the Dark Harvest stacks will eventually become a thing. So great stuff there from the bottom lane of DLE, staying safe. They do get a ton of damage back too, which is continuing to stack up, continuing to add up. And BOP, you know, they are gonna have to try and push this out at some point, but with the way the wave is, they are a prime target for the jungler who they don't know where it is. Speaking of, Hectic over towards the top side. Will get spotted out by a ward, so Sheepman can keep himself safe. And Hectic will be forced to try and find another lane to gank, and he's going from lane to lane. He's happy to head over towards the mid lane now as he sets up a 10 over there, but you can see the wiser to it is going to be random capitals. He's farming towards the bottom side of his lane and does have the rocket jump if he needs to get to safety. Yeah, so the junglers split the crabs. 
one gets top, one gets bottom. They do go for their first backs afterwards. Echo is kind of hanging out in this bottom bush, really trying to get this wave shoved in so that his bottom lane can go for a safe back and can actually, you know, not worry about getting frozen on too hard. But it's just not going to pan out that way. The freeze coming in so far is really nice. Still trying so hard to find this engage, but it's kind of backfiring now. The double snare goes through and the health bars get lower for this bot lane of BOP. So summon is used there. We get the heal from King Joe. We get the cleanse from Vic. So one of those will come back a little bit faster than the other one. But overall, they're spending a ton of time in this bottom lane for BOP, trying to get this wave shoved in, trying to get some more action going for the Kaisa Leona. And so far, you know, DLE, Clayson, and Vic have done an amazing job of just staying safe, you know, surviving the pressure that's coming their way. And, you know, they are going for this fasting Senna uh, support, basically, essentially. And Rush is seeing a CS advantage from the Seraphine, who's, you know, 33 CS, the 27 there, onto King Joe. So that could become a problem if that continues. But are we going to continue to see BOP stay this aggressive? And we should get a flash ignite in the midline are we going to continue to see random capitals going off cooldown with these rocket jumps onto famous forcing famous to back off and even take the recall he's gonna have to use the teleport to get back into lanes and not lose too much but you were talking about it in champ select doc this is the perma pushing that tristana can bring and now starting to cash in on those plates Yep, a little bit of trading going down there. And I, the Tristan is actually kind of nutty in you know one sense because it is going to continuously perma push this Orianna all the way into the tower. And the Halo Blades so far has done an amazing job procking those explosive charges and doing a ton of damage. And Famous, this was their pick, right? Like they had full count. Oh, oh tactic. still able to get the kill on the top over the wall. It's going to be first blood. Drake for kill, ultimately. Kill going in favor of BOP, but they are going to miss out on that early Ocean Drake. Yeah, it's the first Ocean Drake, follows it up with a Cloud Drake as well. So it means we're going to get a pretty spicy soul. It's either going to be the Earth Soul giving you that permanent shield and all of those statistics, you know, enhancements, or it's going to be the Infernal Soul, which does that plus damage. And here comes the Zenith Blade looking to get the engage onto Vic, but King Joe's a little bit too far back. He's not able to get in the damage that he needs to to make this successful, but Derekos might be able to. Gets rooted once again. Orange is now under the tower, still unable oh, to no. get the kill and falls to Vic. What a shame. Tried so hard to find it. Gets found instead. A kill going over to DLE. Meatball trying so hard to get something done here. And just the stickiness of the Leona is outweighed by the survivability of the Senna Seraphine. So many shields, so many heals. And once again, we see Derekos try to get in and try and get something done. And he's just instantly snared off the bat and isn't able to come anywhere near the bottom lane. And as an assassin, that is heartbreaking. They have the first blood book, so they have that 400 in their back pocket, but is it going to be enough for them to carry off of for the next couple of minutes? Because they need to start impacting, impacting these lanes in a meaningful fashion. Uh, like random capitals, always going to be pushing, so you can't gank that lane. You can try and gank top with Sheepman now having the ultimate. Uh, you know, Yone doesn't have an escape outside of Splash, but because there's been no pressure in the top lane, he still has it. He hasn't had to blow it early in any attempt. So any time Derekos tries to look top, he's going to get the flash out. And if they get a kill, great. If not, they'll have to redo it again, this time probably with a little bit of interference from Hectic as well. If you really want to guarantee one of these ganks, you're trying to roam the Leona. The Re Leona should be roaming over towards that top side. Uh, Yone can be very susceptible to it, but more specifically, there's a Malphite there. Malphite presses R, Malphite find gank, Malphite find tower dive. Um, of course, Echo can bring a lot of damage to that, so I feel like a rotation could be the play you really need if you are BOP, but. Instead, they're just happy going for neutral for the time being. Derekos is going to start up that Rift Herald and be able to get that with some assistance from random capitals. Let's see if they go for a rotation towards the top side and give Sheepman some help. I would love that because you do have that parallel convergence. You have, you know, the uh, Tristana damage on top of that unstoppable force. It's very doable, especially with the current build from Atiz. You know, it's just the Berserker Greaves, no sustain, doesn't have a Vamp Scepter or anything like that. So even if you don't kill him, you can force him away from the tower, drop that Herald, and, you know, get a ton of plates back on your side. 
whereas Sheepman is kind of getting bullied a little bit, but still ending up worse for wear. I do love the Leona idea as well. I think that would actually be great in the mid lane with random capitals who does have another you know, quill, is doing a ton of damage already off the famous. If you bring Sheepman down, you potentially give up a bit of an advantage in this mid lane. And, you know, we're already seeing that CS advantage start to stack up. But if you kill Famous, if you give the kill to random capitals, they now become their carry position. And as long as they don't get hit by the Fate Unsealed, they can actually get something done. Uh, we've kind of seen this before. Orange Meatball still going for the engage on the bot side, but High Vic will grab the kill no problem whatsoever. A three on one. Orange Meatball has to start really, really considering these engages and considering where other members are on the map. It's really kind of feeding the best case scenario for DLE as well. You have the fasting Santa, so they're not picking up the farm itself. They're going more for the souls, and yet they're being gifted these kills. So they're getting gold in other ways. They're still stacking their souls up as much as possible, and they do get the heal out. Yeah, play in the bot lane now. Derrico's trying to find this gank. Orange Meatballs will be able to show up on the later half of it as Vic starts to run low. Sub 100 health gets caught in a shutdown over to Derrico. Solar Flare finds its mark onto Clayson. Will it be enough to get the kill on the Clayson? Round and Capital says yes as he rock jumps in and Ooh. scores it. Two kills going over to BOP. Fireman Tristana coming down, putting out the flame of the bot lane for DLE. And there's not a whole lot for them to gain off here, but you can see everybody else rotating into the mid lane, trying to punish Famous with this Rift Herald. The wave will be quite there. It's not going to be enough for a tower kill just yet because it is going to have those, you know, stacking resistances. But oh, wait, who oh, Famous? He didn't have Chrono Break. Shockwave goes out, but now Famous will be the one caught out. There comes the buster shot over the wall. Random Capitals is going to hop Wait. straight to a tease. A tease will use the ultimate and score up the vengeance kill. But here comes Clayson, and there goes the double going over towards the top laner of DLE. We're talking about best case scenario for bottom lane and DLE. Then you go best case scenario for the top laner too. How can you give over two free kills to a Yone who already has this 30 CS advantage almost over your top laner? The guy is going to be nigh unstoppable very soon. Already two components of that immortal short sword bow completed. Once you get that, the fleet footwork, they're just gonna be able to hang out in this lane all day long. Look at this. There's a bramble vest on Sheepman and Atis just doesn't care. He doesn't care, but someone who might is Derricos, who's walking up here knowing that Atiz got two kills. He wants to make him pay for it. Shut down. Derricos scoring some bank of his own. Derricos has gotten three kills total. Two of them have had shutdowns. They got the one onto High Vic for, I believe, it was 250. And they just got that one there onto Atiz, which I also believe was 250. So just 500 golden bounties being gifted to this assassin, who is also stacking up these Dark Harvest stacks. And... The side of DLE really isn't that tanky. They have Olaf as the tankiest, quote unquote, member of the entire squad, and they're gonna be building a core drinker and they have the Ionian boots. So not not what we would call a tank. Definitely more of a bruiser. This is an interesting play to be said though. Uh, yeah, a lot of attention on this top side. Going for the dive, Derekos will have a long way to get out of this, but nope, it's a slippery boy. It's an echo, just dash over the wall and he finds the quick escape but look at this mid lane tower random capital trying to find the first brick of the game and with no one there to give any assistance to famous random capitals will grab first brick yeah and you know the build path from random capital is going to be much more streamlined you know they're an 80 carry they pretty much only have one way to go unless you're ezreal Whereas if you look over to Famous, they have just a sh complete charcuterie board of items. They have to be so mixed up here because they need to get the tier to get the mana. They need the uh, Forbidden Tome to build it into their Mythic. Plus they need a Seeker's Arm Guard just to stay alive in this lane. So it will be a minute before the Orianna fully comes online. Whereas with this Mythic already being completed by Random Capital, they are ready to just run around the map now. Gank in the top lane, gets the stun. Atiz trying to find the outplay, but doesn't have enough damage just yet. Still gets a lot of it on the Derekos, but one more Hughes. Gonna find the mark and find the kill, but here is the Ragnarok as Hectic joining the fray on the top side. Getting the health bars lower and lower, finds one kill, wants to make it number two. Not willing to go for it as Random Capitals makes the roam all the way up. And now here we go, the fight breaks out, Shockwave 
pulling back in from the rocket jump. Random Capitals now famous, feeling a little bit more confident now that he has the backup of Hectic, but Disengage goes through, not willing to continue the fight. That is a great shockwave there coming in from Famous, completely, you know, denying that engage from Random Capitals who had the Ignite ready and waiting and is looking to do it again. This time they're on a ward so that, you know, they are going to be able to see here and they might get a little bit of danger. Gale Force is away. Should be safe. I don't know about that one, but I do know about this one. The teleport over no! towards the bot side as Sheepman joins the fray. King Joe will make Clayson bow. Now Vic. Tries to run away, but The Rock is able to rock Vic and another kill going over. B.O.P. Two unanswered kills with the bot lane. So that play worked, okay? And I know that that's a very thick wall, but you just saw a Malphi face plant the unstoppable force right into the wall. That is something I've never seen before. I didn't realize the wall was quite that, you know, dummy thick. And so now, yes, it's two unanswered kills, but what more can they get out of it? They're, they're getting some tower pressure down in the bot lane. Mid tier one's already gone, so they're just gonna be shoving this wave in for a tease to collect. And now, Second Dragon's already gone to DLE. If they get this next one, which it is the Earth Drake, it is going to be the Earth Soul Potential. And for them, that has a ton to their composition because it makes their squishy members less squishy. You get the bonuses and the resistances, plus you get that Forever Shield. If BOP stop it though, and just get four Earth uh, Dragons in a row, they're literally unkillable. They have the armor of the Leona, the armor of the Malphite, plus the shield onto Tristana and Kaisa, who will have lifesteal. There, there's no shot they ever die from that point forward. Just thinking about the Malphite with that alone, that, that that's enough for me. You, you've seen what happens when Malphites get super, super fed. They're able to build a lot of armor. They get unholy levels of stats. It is something to salivate over to continue uh, to continue that with three Mountain Drakes, uh, four Mountain Drakes even. Yeah, now, and DLE it starts here. Yeah, starts here. 30 seconds left on this dragon. Tons of warding being cleared out here. I do love that Orange is actually hanging out with the buddy system this time, is getting, you know, Derekos, the most fed member of the team, to join them and hold hands through these potentially dark and dangerous bush camps. So they do get full control here. This is where they can really start taking control because if you look over to DLE, how are they supposed to check these bushes without Oriana there? How are they supposed to face check into an Echo Leona Malphite? A lot of this would be a battle of vision. If they're able to get some forward, then they start to become a threat because base checking into the Seraphine is a very, very deadly thing to do. But now feeling confident in his DLE. They start posturing up towards the strike and the inch gauge is gonna go out, trying to find the parallel convergence. Here comes the unstoppable Whoa, force and will clean up the back end. A double kill goes through as the shockwave will find one mark, but hectic not long for this world will fall to the triple now. King Joe is dominating as the dragon falls through, going over to BOP. A net win for them with two unanswered kills, three unanswered kills on top of a drink. Sheepman won that whole fight with one ultimate, completely making up the face plant earlier. Landed perfectly onto the back line of DLE. You got the Seraphine and the Senna, the primest of prime targets here who are doing all the shielding, doing all the healing. And once those two are removed, there really isn't a whole lot left for DLE. You saw the shockwave from Famous come out, only landing onto Sheepman at that point, just allowing you know the double AD carry of King Joe Random Capitals free reign into the front line, back line. They can play it front to back so perfectly because they have all of this just front loaded damage. They have Halo Blades, Tristana, who's throwing down the explosive shard and blowing people up. The Halo Blades, Kaisa, who has the Kraken Slayer now, so you get instant procs there. And there's not there's no armor the the most armor on the side here is the secret arm guard of famous who was in the more back of that fight now sitting up for a tower over towards the bottom side as well as the top side they're just shoving in these lanes dle uh and right now just to get the rotation for their bot lane vic and clayson will be able to roam on out but you really uh, are just picking up scraps of wards here. Those wards already served their purpose towards that Drake. The attention will be towards the top side where you will have that Baron spawning within a minute as well. Man, and yeah, that's what they're going for. Establishment. BOP have just a lightning quick Baron too, if you think about it. Kaisa plus Tristana both having you know their completed mythics. You can't give them unchecked 30 seconds. Somebody needs to be able to pick up a blue trinket for DLE here.
You need something if you're DLE. And, and don't get me wrong, they still have some fight left in them. Uh, they do have some scalers of their own, that being said, it kind of goes both ways, but the LE do have the Orianna, which works really well when you do get for those, uh, do get into those neutral objective fights. Shockwave, we've seen what it can ha what it can do once you do end up in a Baron fight. Get in the right spot, get four or five members, it turns the team fight absolutely. What combos well with that? The Seraphine as well. Yeah, they, we've all seen those, you know, one magic shockwaves take over a whole game and completely upend it. So right now, DLE is just kind of farming for this next big objective, which whether it's the Baron sneakily or if it's going to be this dragon in two and a half minutes, they have to take these next couple minutes, get as farmed and as fed as possible and famous. Yeah, the engage, Shockwave goes out. Here's the Solar Flare, gonna whiff. Famous is able to slip on by. Now trying to get some revenge. It's gonna be a tease as he's able to grab one underneath the tower. Goes after Orange Meatball. Can't find it just yet, but the cavalry has arrived. Hectic and Clayson will join, and a tease will still grab the kill on the back end of it. Able to punish that tower dive coming out of BOP. That was huge gold advantage for RTs. You got another absolutely massive shutdown coming in there from killing um, Derekos. The kill on Orange Meatball just makes it so this is a safe Baron and it's it's melted. It's completely gone. Oh. Kraken Slayer Kaisa plus the Shield Bow, Infinity Edge, a tease. Two items now on the, the Yone and everything we were kind of building up for BOB just gets slapped out of their hands and picked up again by DLE. DLE are bringing it back. Even though they lost that last fight, they're able to find the misstep of BOP and punish it through that. It's something you gotta be careful of. Don't let that hubris get the best of you. Something that can be said for the bot lane right now, as you can see Sheepman going after that tower, but he's gonna face five members of DLE. There's a lot to run away from and the unstoppable force will be able to cover some ground, but an ax finds its mark gets the slow and that's going to be a chain of axes to go through but you won't find the second one sheep man will be able to walk away but that was a lot committed to the bot lane all five members look at the top lane look at the mid lane bop are responding yeah they're going to lose a lot here whether you know they take the tier twos as well they very well can the ultimate comes out but it's going to be pop the chrono break to try and find some safety if you're Derekos, Ragnarok goes through over the wall. Derekos will use the Blast Plant and be able to escape just barely. The siege continues out of DLE, though. They're going for the bot lane inhibitor, but continue to look at their base. There's still a siege going on. Now it's starting to thwart them, though, because there's four members in this base. There's four members wailing away, and there's an exposed inhibitor. The OP are losing more than they thought they would. RT's lost a ton of damage, or a ton of HP, excuse me, diving that tier two tower, but the Immortal Shield Bow plus the Fleet Footwork, they're able to heal it all back up to 100%, plus the Seraphine helps a little bit as well. Now they're trying to fall away. They lost both tier twos top and mid. So overall, it was a trade of three towers for two. I don't know if that's exactly worth it. If they pick up the dragon here, it's great because it puts them onto that soul point. They do secure it. They only need one more for that forever shield so it became worth it but losing three to two on towers when you have the baron that's a tough pill to swallow yeah that's a lot of gold going back over to bob i believe about like 2k was separated a little bit more than this somewhere between three and four and now it's just getting slowly shrunk back down bop they're fighting their way back in it they're being very careful with it now but you can't have any more missteps. This is getting at the critical point of the game where the composition of DLE, they just need one big team fight and they can run away. Yeah, and they have the tools to do it. I mean, Senna is pretty good at melting these towers currently with that Kraken Slayer. Yone obviously going to melt through them. Uh, Oriana, great as well. And I think Oriana right now is kind of falling back into a bit more of a supportive role with the Seraphine just to make sure that Atiz can stay alive and do this. Whoa! The Wombo was beautiful. The bot lane is gone. Now you only have random capitals to really bring the damage here to try and defend and try and bring the wave clear, but he's all the way in the bot lane taking a recall right now. This base is completely exposed. 
Yeah, they're gonna get two inhibitors easily here. The mid one already did to break through the tower, but the bottom one, they already did the hard work. Now they get to take the easy profit coming on through. And Desha, you brought it up in Champion Select. You said the only ball delivery right here is the Yone. And how, you can't ask for anything better. Fate Unsealed catching the two members of the bottom lane and between the damage from the Yone plus that Shockwave just instantly melted and you gained more than you did with the Baron just off of those two kills. That was so beautiful, so pristine, and it puts DLE in a spot where they're just looking to put in that final nail. That nail will be over in the top lane. As you can see, already the recalls come in, those final purchases, and they're sending every single member towards that top side. They're gonna take control of it. They've already cleared out the jungle, so they're denying resources. They're doing everything right at this later half of the game. And the timing here is almost perfect. Like, I don't know if you could even plan this any better. Baron is in a minute and a half now that they only have the top lane to worry about. So they can shove this lane out, go for vision, take over the, the couple bushes here to make sure they're not face checking into anything, and then just fall away on the Baron. A run, Hectic, run. Ragnarok's going to be used. A tease jumps in, but instantly able to slither on out. And now Clayson's going to join the fight. Dodging away, King Joe will use Killer Instinct and pick up one kill to start off this fight. Now the Zenith play back in as a tease is able to find random capitals, but there is another double knockup. A tease is making it look easy as he cleans house. The double kill goes through. Only Sheepman remains. This is going to be victory for DLE. Who needs Baron? Just kill the entire enemy <laughs> team. And I thought that was doomed. I saw Clayson coming up completely solo, no buddy system whatsoever. Derekos just melts them through, and I thought that was kind of a, a dumb, a done message there where they lose the game, but you know, they fall back. And he's once again carrying them through that team fight, and it works out so beautifully. There's too much damage, too much healing onto this Yone, and they even have Grievous Wounds on the side of BOP. You know, they have these Executioner's Callings, and it's just not enough. A tease, easy MVP of that whole map there, completely took it out and carried it, and top diff. Like, that's that's what that game broke down <laughs> to. Uh, we, we need a lot of replays of what happened when uh, King Joe and Orange Meatball just disappeared from the Rift one day. I'm going to put some missing posters all over the Rift, because that was a beautiful wado wombo combo. The shockwave with the fate sealed. Goodness gracious, Doc. I I've never seen someone just disappear in a blink of an eye that quickly since the old league days of LeBlanc and just insta-bashing a single sigil of silence distortion. It was, it was devastating for BOP. Yeah, I mean, I remember like, the DFG LeBlanc days too. So, I mean, <laughs> even that was quick comparatively to the days of old. So, I mean, heading into game number two, because this is a best of three, I don't think the draft from the Brotherhood of Peel Academy was that, you know, terrible. I think they played their bands very effectively, you know, taking out the Odia and the Camille are almost necessary in this day and age. But they gave over Yone Seraphine, and I thought the Seraphine was going to be the problem here. But Atiz is Yone. You, you have to ban it. You just cannot allow that to come through again. Uh, and, and it's not just that. Like, uh, the Yone in the top lane, yeah, sure, it looked great in the team fights. But if you watch the laning itself, look at the CS stiff. It's almost a flame horizon. He controlled that lane. He dominated that lane. And Derekos could never do anything in that top side to alleviate that for Sheepman. So a tease ran wild, plain and simple. Yeah, that is what you expect out of that, you know, carry top into tank matchup, whether it's a Camille, a Yone, Nar, whatever you pick into that situation, you expect them to be the hard carry to carry you on through. And so now do you focus all of your bands here onto the top lane? Like, do you drop the Galio ban for the Yone and try and, you know, bring the Galio into the second phase? Or do you try and go into a skill matchup? Do you counter the Yone with something like a Jax or even just let the Camille ban slip through entirely? That feels a bit scary to me, but we'll have to see what the decision here from BOP is in game number two. Yeah, there's a lot of decision making that has to be done for BOP when it comes to their draft and uh, figuring out an answer to what DLE just brought. We're going to throw it over to a quick break. When we return, we'll get into game number two of the Brotherhood of Peel versus Durham Lord Esports.
Ladies and gentlemen, to Risen Esports Dominate League, Brotherhood Appeal versus Durham Lord Esports. And game number one, a very interesting back and forth, but ultimately, Durham, they look great, Doc. They look great. Yeah, I do think a lot of it came down to the top laner uh, just having too much damage to deal with. But overall, they had some really great things coming out from most members. I mean, the weakest link so far, I think so far, has been um, that mid laner Famous, who had a bit of an oopsie just because they were in a rough lane. Um, but Atiz and the bottom lane there of Vic and Clayson, uh, they they stayed strong. They kept their head in the games. They farmed up. They got their items. You know, even the bottom lane, they took so much pressure from Derekos on that Echo, and they still didn't give up any kills for the most part. They farmed away and were being able to carry into the later half of the game. So as we head to this draft phase once again, similar draft, or bands, excuse me. But this time they learned about the Seraphine. Yeah, that one's so, that's so weird to me. I don't <laughs> think the Seraphine was the problem. I didn't Dude, learn about that. I, I really don't think the Seraphine was the problem. I think the Yone just opened up so many holes there into the BOP game line or gameplay that that, that was my ban. Like they dropped Camille for Seraphine. So maybe they're thinking pick Camille into Yone and have that be their skill matchup. Uh, it, it might be the case. And I, I, I could definitely see that being some oh, shit. We're just, just vibing through this, man. Kai said Shogath get grabbed, but uh, uh, one of the things I was going to say is like one of the problems I was seeing was the fact that the Malphite was picked so late into the Yone. It, it almost felt like he was counterpicking himself at the end of the day. Um, you know, Malphite, you can get a lot of armor, but once you get punished, once they start camping that lane and once they start dying a lot, all the armor doesn't mean anything if yone has that massive of a gold lead so they're gonna try out the chogath this time they're saying the malphite wasn't working out let's just throw it over to the cho yeah and speaking about the direct lane opponent they didn't win the game because they killed the malphite they won the game because they killed vic and clayson like they they had that <laughs> wombo of the yone oriana you kill the bottom lane you get mid bottom inhibitor for free that that blew the game wide open so it doesn't means so so much in the top lane island because eventually that bridge will be built and you'll be able to interact with the mainland of mid and bot I'm, I'm i'm just hoping i'm just hoping they have an idea of what they're doing here um cho has been seen in competitive recently if i remember correctly but he's definitely a very very odd one to see go through uh oriana gets locked in so does rengar headed into the second phase of the draft Band's going to be Tristana, Alistair, and Hecarim. So not going to let the Tristana through. Not going to let BOP be able to try the waters with that. Rel getting banned away, of course, a very aggressive support. Alistair matches that as well. Both of them work really well into Kaisa. Now we're into the pick going over to BOP. So we still have the support here for BOP and Durham. Uh, I do imagine we will see a hook champion. Um, you know, Leona's still available, Thresh and Blitzcrank and Nautilus all available as well. BOP have a really interesting draft once again. I kind of want to see the Cho'Gath go like the full glacial build. Um, like if anybody remembers back before Mythics when we would see like, um, you know, Spooky Ghost and um, wasn't Everfrost, I can't remember, uh, GLP, water gun or whatever the heck that one was um and you just were annoying and slowing and using that to hit the rest of your composition uh right now everfrost is 
crazy good. So I would love to see BOP uh, Cho'Gath go for that. You know, go the Glacier route, pick up an Everfrost. Um, you know, maybe even a um, the Frost Fire Fist because that I believe should proc Glacial as well because of the way it works. I'm not 100% sure on that interaction, but I think that could be fun and kind of cheesy into the Yone. It might just be enough to to take over that lane with a little bit of jungle support from the Rengar. I, I like how you had to stop about it for a second. Just the Frost Fire Fist. It's almost a tongue twister in its own right. Next band's coming in. Uh, next band's, excuse me, next pick's coming in. Swain gets locked in for Dharma, as well as the Olaf going back to the Olaf. And I don't blame him for it. It did have a pretty good effect when uh, you consider how aggressive Hectic was able to be with the Olaf. He did dive in deep, knowing that his champion does have a lot of control early. So I like to see that pick, and you know, it pretty make, pretty much makes the top side the same exact thing as before, having that Olaf Yone combo. But ultimately, BOP are going to grab the Leona and choose that to round it off. It's not going to be the miss pick on the LeBlanc this time. We do have the Leona for sure. Yeah, I, I do love the Leona Kaisa. It, it's incredibly strong. You kind of have that hard engage plus that hard follow up that could be really great, especially comboed with the rest of the team. Um, especially if you get like a solar flare into the Rengar um, on the hunt jump out and you can surprise somebody and blow up maybe potentially the squishiness of Durham because once again, they don't have a true tank. So this is two games in a row now. They're relying on Olaf to be that hyper tanky, well, not hyper tanky, but like their tank, quote unquote. Uh, this time though, their noticeably dif uh, difference is they don't have any healing. They don't have a Seraphine. They don't have a Senna. So all of this damage that falls to the Olaf is going to be permanent. He's not going to get much help in that department. So he does have to be a little bit safer into these skirmishes and, you know, full on engages because he doesn't have that type of backup behind him. Um, Durham, though, they picked up the Swain, which in a sense is kind of meme because he's a mid laner that's been brought down to the support role, much like Zyra. Um, but he does a ton of damage and he's, I mentioned hook champions, you know, uh, Thresh, Nautilus and Blitzcrank. I guess I could kind of consider Swain a hook champion considering <laughs> he hooks people in with his passive. I, I, I guess. <laughs> I mean, if we're going with that, sure. Uh, I'm, I'm not the biggest <laughs> fan of this bot lane though. The Jin and Swain, it's. I mean, you can. I, I can see like a little bit of the magic there. You can hold him down for days. Uh, it, th there's damage going all over the place when Swain's able to get level six, and you do get Jin with the curtain call. But you're still in a go. You're still going against Kaisa Leona, and that's a very, very potent lane that brings a lot of damage early. It doesn't really need that much itemization before it's able to come online. So I, I can see the priority going heavily into BOP's favor, but. We, we, we kind of saw what priority meant last time. BOP had the early prio in the first game, and it didn't really amount to much. Yeah, and I think specifically Jin Swain's just a really kind of outlier lane because they can engage upon you kind of unsuspectingly because typically in a normal lane here what you would expect is if you get onto um, one of those flowering traps and you get hit by a, a deadly flourish you're just kind of like all right cool the support's not really near me i don't have to worry about it much this time though if you do get caught by any of those errant deadly flourishes then all of a sudden the swain can pull you back into the passive line up his hook shot it's not hook shot it's never move or uh, miss when i was never moved those are the good old days of swain um but then pull you back in again and all of a sudden you're within range for the gin to really hurt you so it could be kind of fancy if they can get combos like that off and have um hectic come in and you know punish a lot but i think a lot of this lane is going to be pushing from this the kaisa engage from the leona they're going to spend a lot of time under tower and if they get assistance great if they don't i'm not that concerned for vic and clayson after their game one performance now the one thing the le do have to worry about is just how much damage bop are bringing at the end of the day because they did take the ringar you yep. also have the leona and you got a singer kaisa as well so that's a lot of damage that you're just that you're getting without much investment into it uh and that's a lot of damage that can be under the tower that's a lot of damage that can be in a skirmish that's that can be brought anywhere there's not much of a condition you need to execute bop's comp so it's one of the things yeah. i really do like about it that being said though when you do take the rengar you do have that risk of going into the feast or famine territory if you don't get that much of a lead rengar just kind of works as a bruiser that doesn't really do much on the map other than throw a bola hello i'm coming at you <laughs> uh if he gets fed then say goodbye to your adc that's pretty much it. 
Yeah, and I think if he does get fed, they're hopefully just going to be saying goodbye to Atiza's Yone time and time again. Oh, so yeah. uh, there is some thought behind the pick. And if you look at the rest of the team, you know, obviously without Kaisa, everybody else has hard engage and they have decently ranged hard engage between the solo mm -hmm. flare, the scatter of the week. Um, the knock up from Cho'Gath is kind of far. It, it's not the farthest, but it, it can do some stuff. Um, so they're going to be looking to really kind of punish the melee of durham um and hopefully they don't feed the gin or the Yana, oriana because then it kind of blows up their whole game plan because if you have too many targets that you need to assassinate rengar can only do one at a time unless you're in the jungle playing around with that dusk blade potentially that becomes scary but if durham are smart about it they're just only going to fight in the river and in the mid lane and as long as the ocean soul doesn't come out adding those extra bushes then there's not a whole lot of you know distance the rengar can really cover in these wide open expanses so we'll see what these teams can do. Brotherhood of Appeal, Brotherhood of Appeal, Brotherhood of Appeal, Durham Esports. Well, we'll see who's able to take this victory. We're going to throw it over to a short break. When we return, we'll get into game number two, this matchup in Risen's Dominate. Dominate League, Brotherhood of Peel versus Durham Lords Esports. Already DLE able to take the first game of the series. The response of BOP after seeing that Yone is to continue to ban away the Seraphine and try a Cho'Gath into it this time instead. 
It is going to be the Grasp Cho'Gath, so my dream of seeing Glacial Augment Everfrost is dead. Uh, <laughs> but we persevere nonetheless. Now, this should be an interesting matchup because they might just kill him. Oh, they forced the flash out of Derrico so early. Oh, that's that's not going to be a good look in a couple minutes. And they're not even lighting him recall. Sort of bullying him away, but he is the Rengar. You've taken something that's a little bit off the meta, so... Let's see if he can be a little bit slippery with it. That's one of the things about these champions that uh, you don't see as much is players will tend to kind of forget how to play against them. Uh, you know, usually in uh, more experienced teams where they do have coaches and whatnot, they are able to punish that. And, you know, you just have a, you have a system there that's able to get you in line to be able to take out some of these more punishing, weird, uh, haphazard picks. But when you're in something just like this, you, you technically don't really have those resources as widely available to you. Yeah, I mean, so we do have, you know, NAPGs and stuff like that. As you get a bit of an engage. Ooh, a lot of a bit of engage. Hi, Vic. Just loses almost the entirety of his health bar off of that little sneaky, sneaky bush play from Orange Meatball and King Joe. It looks like he expected, though. I mean, going boots four pot, that is not something we have seen in a very long time, especially in the AD carry position because the Doran items are just so useful. Absolutely. Getting Dark Harvest stacks already two minutes into the game. This is this is so much action, Deserux. There's just nonstop. <laughs> and this is one of the things I was kind of forgetting about the Swain is at the end of the day, it's a ranged champion. So ranged into melee matchup, the support rule is, you know, usually you get the early harassment off with the ranged rule. And as we're seeing with the Swain, he's able to keep pulling in orange and keep harassing him, get him low before the level two happens. But now it's level two advantage going over towards the bot lane of BOP. Now they're going to have some tools online. So let's see how this shapes up with the course. Yeah. Both teams will be able to even out a little bit for now. Uh, mid lane, Syndra Oriana is a, a tale as old as time, right? Like, we've seen this matchup since we've had both champions in the game. Clearly, you can see both mid laners are familiar with the matchup, just trying to test the boundaries here before the junglers start getting involved. Um, speaking of which, it does look like both of them are going to be getting a full clear, started on opposite side of the maps once again. And I wanted to bring up Derrico specifically because this isn't an unknown pick for them. This isn't something they were kind of just feeling in draft. This is their second most played champion. What is a little bit worrying, though, is they only have a 48% win rate across solo queue with this champion, which is, I don't know if it's something I would bet my whole best of three on. I, you, uh, you know, it's the pocket pick. Uh, you, you just run with it as Orange Meatball runs into Clayson, trying to hold him down so Derek Ghost can get down to the bot lane until Daybreak goes out. Still more damage on the Clayson. First blood will go to King Joe. So, VOP, they get their footing and they're able to find it early. Did cost them a lot, though. All sums gone from bot lane. Just swing away. Random Capital yeah. burns his flash, but hey, that's an easy gank done by Hectic this time. Yeah, more flashes down, which means that more Olaf ganks can happen. So, I mean, yeah, costing all four summoners from your own bottom lane to get that first blood. Thankfully, it went to the Kai'Sa, which is where they needed it, because that is going to be their carry this game. That is where all the damage goes down. It would have been cool to go to Rengar, but with the way Rengar operates, Actually, you know what? I may, I may have to retract my statement. I think I would have preferred to go to the Rengar. <laughs> Ooh, mid lane, famous. Gets hit by the Scatter of the Week. Oriana Ball goes out, and so does the Singer one, forcing the flash out of Famous. Yeah, Famous actually not respecting the phase rush there. Got a ton of movement here. Oh, Orange? <laughs> and less and less respect played from Orange as he recalls right on top of a ward. Nice place for Clayson to just grab him and interfere with that. Force him to take the long road back home. More and more time burnt with that little harassment. Yeah, just more time that it leaves King Joe uh, by themselves in this 2v2 bottom lane, which could be kind of scary because of the crowd control that they have. Uh, you do have the first blood here. Level 6 is going to be coming in quite soon for everybody not named bottom lane. So we are going to see, you know, 
sheepmen be able to start stacking up these feasts try and get to that big big togath level that we all know and love um we're going to be a little bit further away before we start seeing throw the hunt comes in from uh rengar and stuff like that but that is a very critical time frame for rengar that very first ultimate has to result in something or else you're just putting yourself in an almost unskippable hole We'll see how soon that level comes in. He's just barely hitting level 5, so he still needs quite a few camps before he's able to get that level 6. But taking a look over in the top side all meanwhile, my big worry about a tease on the Yone was not how he does in the team fights, it's how he does in the lane. And we're kind of seeing slight shades of that. It's already a very strong CS advantage coming in from a tease, and he's bullying this lane, constantly going after Sheepman and constantly shoving it in towards the tower. You already see it's drawn the attention of Hectic, who's getting more control up towards the top side. Matias hasn't even been forced to use a potion yet. Still has that original one they came into the lane with, whereas on the opposite side, you do see Sheepman having already burned that potion earlier. It is a Cho'Gath, so you are getting that healing passive to keep you somewhat relevant, which is much more better than the Malphite would have had in this situation, but Sheepman can't even really go for this because of how afraid he is. Yeah, you can see it. He autos and then runs away, realizing that his tease didn't actually take that one call. And the CS lead just continues to grow. It's very minor right now. It only results in about 250 gold between these two top laners. But now there's the wave crashing into the tower, and it forces the teleport to be used from Sheepman. And this is what I'm going to be keeping an eye on here. If the recall does come out from a tease, he did crash the wave, so he has the ability to walk back into lane. And that will give a TP advantage over to DLE. Yeah, and we actually see a great first back coming in from a tease too. You know, back 1800 HP or gold, excuse me. Ooh. He's hungry right now. Hectic dives on in. He wants an orange meatball, and it's going to be Clayson who grabs it instead. The scumbag support will pocket that Whoa. gold. Yeah, actually, yeah. as an AD carry player, yes, yeah, scumbag support. <laughs> but, I mean, Swain is great with gold. He gets a ton of damage that he can continue to build up with. Um, once he hits level 6, he's an actual AP scary threat. Oh, all right, that should end that as random capital forced to fall away. But, yeah, once, the, you know, the level 6 and the items start coming up from the Swain, he's legitimately an AP carry type threat. Oh, long live the king. Will this be the case? King Joe gets his health bar destroyed. Orange can only watch in horror as his ADC gets annihilated, but a dive successful way past the tower for DLE. is able to grab that kill. And they're crashing a wave right on top of it too. Bad things are happening here on the red side. They're not going their way. They're losing plates. They're losing advantages. And we're seeing a very similar situation from game one kind of happen. Um, just kind of... I, I don't know. Like, lots of advantages going one way, and it doesn't seem like they're always earned advantages either they're just kind of advantages that happen through the game state and so you know we're shoving waves in here kais is gonna be able to collect it but again huge back coming in already has the fully completed boots almost 1100 gold in the pocket of vic so they're gonna get a nice buy here <laughs> we're trying to stop the recalls won't get it in time so we'll see what they're able to purchase with that and it does look like they can't get any main completed components yet but it's still itemization that's pretty relevant considering the game state i mean you do have serrated dirk that's on king joe so that's something you're gonna have to challenge once you do get back into lane but uh eh, all being said it's not the biggest loss if i got the pickaxe double uh double long swords is Jin. Oh, no. he's very happy with the boots of swiftness always but exchange going on in the jungle orange meatball and hectic be able to meet each other over here derikos can come over the wall here comes the attack orange meatball gets the kill Supports just pocketing gold left and right here, but here comes Clayson going into the face of Joe. Able to get the stun, but will not continue with the engagement. That is definitely scumbag support territory. The Leona versus the the Rengar and the Syndra is definitely not where you want the gold to go. I mean, she has all these bonus stats built into her kit, you know, some uh, steroids there as well, but yeah, she gets incredibly tanky with gold, but I mean, is it really what you want? Throw the hunt coming out as well. Flash for flash. Clayson wants none of that. 
will be able to back up. But here is the Siege going towards the bot lane. They're still shoving in this wave, going after Clayson. Clayson goes golden. Standing in between three members, he will be able to back off to the safety of his tower. But here comes the teleport. It will be used. Actually, was it interrupted? The answer is yes, Sheetman was able to stop it, but the kill goes through nonetheless. Easy cancel there. If you see someone teleporting in the middle of the wave, so disrespectfully in the face of a Cho'Gath, you're definitely going to rupture that. And so it is tragic that the kill still goes over. Vic with that deadly flourish into the Dark Harvest proc. Just nobody willing to block for the poor, poor meatball. And more advantages being gained. More minions being shoved into King Joe. <laughs> and we've seen this before too. Sheepman's been in a rough spot as he gets herded underneath his outer tower. Now a tease on one side, hectic on the other. They're looking to close and collapse on poor Sheepman and grab another kill. Hectic will get it this time, but teleport from the mid lane. Random capitals will show, but only to protect the dirt plates from any more abuse. Sheepman was like 10-ish seconds away from being able to just turn that around. Feast was on cooldown and a tease, hanging out with sub 200 HP is like inviting disaster but knew the cooldown knew that it had been used on a minion just slightly earlier so they took full advantage of that cooldown it's not just these summoner spells you can punish it's these high damaging abilities that can really ruin your day and it's great that they're paying attention to these types of small minutia things because they're coming out ahead for it that is an earned advantage kill on the hectic Ooh, and the shockwave comes out it stops the hop from derrico so Famous gets to see another day. He doesn't get to see the Rengar in his face. He will see Shelly charging his tower. Now the response out of BOP. They realize it wasn't successful. They did get the flash. They're going to put Shelly down in the mid lane and use the attention diverted by that to go grab the Drake. Yeah, they get a couple hundred gold there onto Derekos nicely. He definitely needs it. Only has those two assists to his name. And this is going to be dicey in a second. Ooh, a curtain call goes through. Orange Meatball taking every single one of those shots. Almost falls one shot away from meeting the respawn. We'll take the recall back over to there instead of the death. Yeah, they do get the dragon though. So very similar landscape to game number one. They're able to get both dragons. They're able to really start moving things forward. And so, you know, as we head into the next couple minutes, it's going to start getting a little bit scarier for BOP, who do have this Rengar, who's a bit anemic at this point. Um, we have one Mythic across the entire team, and it's onto that top lane uh, Cho'Gath. So it does appear to be the Turbo Chem Tank, you know, kind of similar to like that old freezing build from the, the Cho'Gaths, where they would use the movement speed ability to be able to get in and freeze everybody up. Um, so going to be trying to be that big beefy frontliner to either distract from the Rengar or to follow something up, whether it's their Rengar engage or the Syndra engage um, and just be relevant. You know, it's not that Frostfire, which has the more armor. So Cho'Gath is setting themselves up for success, even though they're 40 CS down and a kill. Ooh, look at this bot lane. Derrico's looking to set up for a gank. He's trying to find it onto Vic. And it's the ultimates used by Clayson. Clayson tries to run Diversion. It's not going to be enough to save Vic as Vic will fall. Now the Reckless Swings coming through as the Ragnarok is popped. Here comes the Shockwave to respond onto Sheepman. But knocked into the air is famous. Derrico's hopping back and forth from bush to bush to claim the kill onto the mid lane. There comes the Rupture. The knockup onto Clayson. Double kill going into the pocket of Joe as BOP are able to Bop DLE, everyone but a tease. Now they're focusing up on this bot lane tower. The kitty cat has earned their feast. Everything coming together there. Derrico's getting a ton of gold. Uh, King Joe getting a ton of gold. Sheepman almost dying to a trap. Everything working out for them. <laughs> BOP, just they, they finally get something going their way. They all teleport in. It's a very hectic fight. You saw Vic really try and get into the back line and try and get some you know counter damage on. And a perfectly time exhaust there from Clayson trying to punish King Joe. Unfortunately for them, everybody else came together on the side of BOP. They used their crowd control. They allowed the Rengar free reign. Nobody stops the kitty cat from doing anything it wanted to do. And you see how much damage, even without a complete mythic you can get out of that champion see hectic there in the mid lane 
Uh, it, it's kind of what we've seen from Hectic so far this entire series. He just wants to go in. He just wants to fight. Well, it's not going to find at that time. It will be running diversion off of Orange Meat. Now Hectic realizing his team has lost quite a bit. They want to find something else on the map, so they're going to go after Shelly. Sending almost the entire squad there. They are going to send the entire squad there. Vic will show up. And it's a lot committed to be able to grab this, but hey, there wasn't much else left on the map, so why not at this point? And it is second Herald, so you're not going to get any plates with this one. You are either going to have to secure the tower, or it's just going to end up being tower damage. So with the only remaining, or with the only tier one being down, being top lane, I do expect them to kind of focus towards that bot middle. Um, try and really take advantage of Vic with this completed Gale Force. Uh, try and shove this wave in and, you know, force King Joe to respond. Or try and punish random capitals, who on this Syndra is very susceptible to ganks, you know, Flash is available, but outside of that, no real escape there. You can combo it with the Swain to try and pull him back in and really punish him and then try and finish off this bot tier one. That's best case scenario, but for now, they're going to be farming up. Dragons in a minute. This could be soul point for BOP, which is kind of scary if you're on the side of DLE. Yeah, and BOP already have some vision established. They're trying to get those deeper control wards. Hectic will be able to clear one of them out. But the lanes are getting shoved in. You do have mid lane going in favor of BOP as they head straight back for those wards. Continue clearing them out as they wait for both Derekos and Random Capitals to head over towards that dragon side. That being said, Famous, Teleport on cooldown. This should be handily in favor of BOP if it does spawn in a timely enough manner. But nope, Famous will walk on down. He wants to join this fight. He wants to be there with the squad. Yeah, we're seeing Vic coming in from base as well. A T is getting a little aggressive upon, but random capital is so low. Solar flare glows out, and there is the Zenith on to Clayson. We'll take him down. A T is now trying to survive, but Sheepman is a tanky boy and will eat him for breakfast. It's going to be a two for one exchange in favor of BOP thus far, but DLE are still holding the battle line. They're still standing nearby this Shrek, and King Joe will punish them for it. Taking down the jungler. Shockwave goes out onto the opposing jungler, but here comes the rupture looking to find it, and they will score it on to Vic, and they will be rewarded with the Drake. There's just too much crowd control on BOP for DLE to handle right now. And the biggest factor so far is the Feast being able to delete a T a tease from the game. You know, even with that Immortal Shield bow, with all the healing there, if you get low enough, you just die. It's just a free insta-kill button after a certain point, and it's something that was so direly missing in game number one because a tease at any point was able to heal up. There was nothing to chunk him out that last 10% of his HP bar. So now that they have that, these fights are actually a little bit more scary. A tease needs to play them a little bit more conscious of that one ability, which kind of warps the whole game at this point because you can use it to secure objectives whether it's the dragons or the baron you know your smite stealing capabilities for the side of hectic are not the same they were in game one and look at how tanky he is already he's got a ton of armor and four billion hp to deal with it on top of it and he's trying to take down the big boy sheepman gets a good chunk of his health knocks him down to about a third only losing a third on his own you can see how much of a threat a tease is when he's into that side lane I would actually kind of expect Sheepman to build up a Warmogs if you think about it, because this trade happened. They're both at a, like you said, at about losing a third HP. And he just needs to hit minions to heal it back up. You know, the fleet foe, or the conqueror this time, excuse me, uh, plus the immortal shield bow, it's Omnivamp and lifesteal and everything else. Here we go. It's he is trying to find the engagement onto Sheepman. Sheepman forced to burn his flash as Hectic's going to join the fray, but only watch his top laner style on and chat all over Sheepman. A Tease is a beast. Warmogs would have helped. He would have been full HP. He wouldn't have had to <laughs> worry about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, situations like that, the vamp is something you have to actively do. Whereas the healing from the uh, Warmogs or something similar would just be passive. You could have taken that original trade, hung out for a couple seconds, gotten all of that HP back, and that would be super vital to whittling down. Yes, Shurgath has a ton of passive healing, but when you only are clearing a wave, wave and a half of minions at a time, it's not enough to keep up with the tease at this moment. And the tease with that split push, as well as with the Rift Herald, gonna get a lot of damage onto that tier two tower on the bot side. 
knocking it almost down. Only 32 health remains on it, dog. Oh, so. man. Matias is doing a job. That's kind of tragic when you look at it. You're like, oh, the tower's going to fall. I'm fine to back away. I don't need to do one more auto attack. And then all of a sudden, you never get the notification. And you're just looking back like, what happened? Where all the? There was a minion there. What happened to it? And you're just like, oh, man. A nice Stiff breeze, breeze. would have took it down. Yeah. Yeah. But all right. What do we got going on here? We got Dragon in just under two and a half. Wards being cleared out on both sides. As we take a look across both teams, we have Mythics completed fully across the board. Still waiting on boots from Famous. They went more for that magic resist. They're building that um, Verdant Barrier. Great item into magic compositions. Unfortunately for them, the only magic is random capitals, really. Um, so we'll, the Banshee's Veil, though, will help because it'll block the, the Solar Flare, it'll block the Scatter of the Weak or even a Errant Rupture if that's the initiation. So that'll help in a sense for Famous, but what we need from them is another big Shockwave. We haven't seen that much from them this game. Now setting up to try and grab random capitals here. You gotta be careful though, because the Syndra can bring the fight right back, and here comes Derrico's huge chunk of damage onto Clayson, but I believe the splash damage right there is what took down Clayson from random capitals, was able to get that kill. But that's a setup right there. You can see it coming out right away. The response comes out of BOP, they set their lines, and they react to what DLE are doing and take them down in a heartbeat. Redguard does a lot of damage for, you know, Oh, speaking of damage, we saw that one before, Doc, but it was only solo on a random capitals. He was gone just like that. And everybody got a piece of it. You got the Yone, the Oriana, and the Jin all getting kill credit there. Assists galore. Dark Harvest stacks coming through as well. And, you know, yes, Rengar can delete one. But if you get that same exact series of events happening and all of a sudden you have King Joe or Derekos or Orange Meatball standing anywhere near Random Capitals, it's a two-for-one. And that is what lost you the last game. It's going to lose you this next Dragon, potentially, as we are seeing the Vision Control falling out of BOP's hands. And it's he is... He won't have the ultimate for this next fight, so could get a little scared. Yeah, and Dragon is spawning very, very soon, going straight after Famous, who goes golden, but there's wolves circling him. Here comes the Solar Flare. King Joe will grab one kill. It'll be a one for one as Atease hops over the wall to find himself to safety. Curtain Call goes out, almost takes down Ravnum Capitals, but Derekos is here. Derekos wants a tease, and the Kitty Cat's going to make a run for it once he realizes what a tease is made out of. A tease gets oh, eaten nice. out of nowhere by Sheepman. Now Vic on the run as Hectic runs in, but falls to King Joe. Uh, and there is the rupture, there is the kill, there is the ace, there is BOP making their stance on this map, trying to turn this into a series. Huge play from uh, BOP. Absolutely massive insanity from the Brotherhood of Peel, and they are rewarded handsomely for it. They kill everybody, they get the fourth dragon, actually. That was the soul dragon. I thought it was the third. No, that is the fourth and final earth dragon they now have the shielding forever for the rest of the game it is a recoverable shield so even if you lose a bad trade for a second you'll get it right back plus the double earth dragon means you do get the bonus resistances out of your tanky stats which means sheepman is a wall now like so much tankier than the malphite of last game plus having that true damage execute on top of it there is a tough ask for the rest of DLE to try and delete them from the game. And it also, more importantly, is he dead? He's dead. Yeah, he's he's very much dead and famous might be as well. King Joe just jumps on him and destroys him. Two members down just like that. Clayson and famous, nowhere to be seen as BOP start up the Baron. And if you look at it, almost no damage came back from using both the Fate Unsealed and this shockwave and you know the shields are back the healing is back they're going for it oh a tease you can't make it happen this time you are not that far ahead the rupture goes out onto hectic but the kitty cat's gonna have his way kaisa grabs the double kill this baron is very much in the hands of dle not uh, dle excuse me bop it's dle falling in this fight BOP are making up so much ground from their game number one, and it almost looks like a completely different team. 
and the biggest difference has been not allowing a tease to just 1v9 these team fights when you have this Cho'Gath and all of this other crowd control being able to lay down on top of that one you know feast or famine champion there's not a lot of feasting there a tease very very low in the totem pole right now two three and one yes they have a 56 cs advantage cool great they've seen gray screen so much more so far than sheepman in that one death and it is set up to continue being that way they are going to get a little bit of do damage done with that baron buff recall spend all of that gold they earned because they earned a lot in a couple of series events because they got that first fight at the dragon then the dragon then the second fight at the baron then the baron and they are so far ahead now 8k gold advantage and you can see dle just trying to clear out the wards they're looking for any footing they can find and vision could be it but here it is bop they're setting up for the, the sieges they want to close out this game they want to close it out very very soon so yeah you can take the vision over on the top side jungle but bop will re-establish it towards the bottom side considering that you know there's still inner towers available over there there's not much value having that vision on that top side not much value in the yone either i mean they did all that and they barely broke the shielding off of BOP, and so now they're going to be able to walk these minions in tower not long for this world. So, BOP are in a fantastic position. This is almost, you know, un uh, what's the word? Unrecoverable from DLE. I mean, they need they basically need to get the Elder Drake in two and a half minutes if they want any chance of bringing this back. Because right now, the Baron is just walking these minions in. They got the tier one in mid or tier two, excuse me. They're going to get tier two in bottom lane as well. Look at all that damage from Derekos onto to the tower. Not even to a minion or a champion, just like straight up the tower damage. And now sieging up for what could be the final push. All it takes is one scatter of the week, one rupture to find its mark, and this team fight could start off. Here we go. Random Capitals will be the first one to fall. He did get off the unleashed power in time though, but it's hectic. Trying to hold the line. Health bars are getting low. Front to back team fight coming out of DLE. Will it be successful though? The front line too strong for BOP as they push forward into the base of DLE, taking down everyone. But Famous, they set their eyes on him. One more Bola, one more strike. There is the ace. BOP take down DLE. At the end of the day, it's a three for five. Thankfully, they killed the three of them, so the game is still alive. There is still hope for DLE to get something done. They are going to respawn just in time for this Elder Drake. So, thankfully, us on the broadcast desk, we get one more team fight, Desirex. We get one more chance to see the game, uh, you know, live or flourish or just end here in a couple minutes. And so, one minute left on the timer. Everybody's going to be backing into the base. And, you know, DLE has to hope they're as strong as possible. They have one shot, one opportunity to bring this game back. And if they cannot win this Elder Drake fight, then there's nothing at this moment from stopping BOP from just walking in and taking their Nexus. I, I don't see how they win it now. Do you see how strong that front line was? Even though DLE were trying their darndest to break through it, it was still Sheepman eating people for lunch breakfast and dinner he was having more than his feed there was not much you can do to get through that even though king joe and capitals did go down capitals was out of position he went down pretty much on his own mistake there in a given team fight around this dragon you're not going to have the same type of opportunity to be able to catch him out yeah i mean that was the exact sequence of events we saw in game one that ended it we saw the only the, the unsealed fate into the shockwave onto the backline of BOP. This time they did that as well. And this time they even included in Sheepman in the combo and basically took zero damage. And what ended up happening was they survived long enough through that initial burst that when Atiz came in for the re-engagement, they were, they were just low enough that the feast was enough to cut them out. And ah. look at this. Ah, I see. Too bad He's Atiz dead. doesn't. Sheepman destroys him oh so quickly. Shockwave goes out, but it's on to Sheepman, who's a big boy. He can take care of himself. The dragon call is made. Elder is on the table, and he can see in the wings. Hectic wants to get the steal. It's pretty much all he can do is go for a steal. So waiting for that Ragnarok to be popped, waiting for him to run in and make that last stand. But King what? Joe <laughs> will find Vic. Here he comes, and there he goes, and here we go. B.O.P. Everyone down but famous, but this should be the closing moments of the game when you have five members strong knocking at your door. 
I so like I saw the kill notification of Vic falling down, and I saw Kaisa standing on his corpse, and I missed everything in the the half second before that when he got exploded. But everything coming together finally in a victory for the Brotherhood of Peel Academy, and they're gonna take game number two, taking us to game number three, and a tease for everything they did in game one. They fall flat here. They find themselves hunkered down on this fountain. And it is going to do it here. We're going to game three, Desirex. Game number three. We have ourselves a series. And it's the first time that DLE have dropped a game in a series. That being said, small sample size. This is going to be series number three. But it's got to feel good when your Brotherhood appeal and you just have that 1-1 one, one apiece. And you're standing right at victory's door. Yeah, you only need to win one more. And so, you know, we were kind of suspect about the draft here from BOP, but they definitely made it work. Once that Rengar got that one item, it did so much more productivity than the Echo at the same stage in game number one. So I I, I questioned it. I didn't believe in it. I'm definitely a believer now. And so I'm curious what DLE will adjust here into the game three draft since they didn't adjust anything in game number two. And when you're looking at this draft, the the Cho'Gath was the biggest issue because it did everything the Malphite wanted to do and did it better. It is the cooler tank top laner. Yeah, and it survived against the Yone in that top lane much better than the Malphite did. That was the big thing right there because the Yone, if it got ahead in lane, then you were going to see that lane uh, start to impact everything else. They made sure to keep that quelled. They didn't give a tease that big opportunity to come in as strong as he did in game number one. And from there, it was just control over the map. It was back and forth. It wasn't the cleanest game, but it was. It it, it did show that the brother the Brotherhood of Appeal learned their lesson and could adapt their game plan, not just by banning it out, but by playing against it. We're also going to notice that, or I'm just noticing that King Joe secretly secured themselves a 15 to 10 score line. That that's crazy because uh, it didn't seem yeah. like they were they carry that game, but all of a sudden they're here with like a 13 KD. Like that's insane. <laughs> yeah, I uh, that that slipped by me. I'm I'm going to be honest there. <laughs> that is. Uh... That is a cleanup crew if I've ever seen it, but it, it's kind of something you do want from your Kaisa. It's not oh, to yeah. say that you don't want him doing like DPS or whatnot, because if you look at the damage charts, I mean, he earned his kills. That is for sure. But if the Kaisa's playing safe and racking him those last hits, well, the Kaisa's playing right. That's the way the Kaisa needs to be yeah. played. Well, it, at the end of the day, King Joe, yeah, you slid on by us. We, we were so so taken back by sheepman and derricos really running the map that we didn't see that you were the one running the show <laughs> yeah so if you can do that in game number three it's definitely going to be another victory here for bop and it would hand dle their first series loss as we've already talked about so mm. that is a huge upset victory so far here in week number three so can they do it i think it comes into draft three here and maybe they have some more shenanigans waiting for us at the other end of it yeah, I, I feel like this is the most draft-based matchup I've ever seen between two squads. But uh, speaking of draft, we got to go set up for that. So while we prepare for draft, we're going to throw it over a short break. When we return, we'll get into game number three of the Brotherhood of Peel versus Lord Durham's Esports.
<laughs> totally wasn't on my phone just now, uh, trying to figure out what the hell's going on. Uh, welcome back to Risen Esports Dominate League. That's Rix here. And, of course, Doc with BOP versus DLE. And this matchup, we've made it a series, Doc. We've, we've gotten to that point. Turns out BOP weren't that scared of the Yone because they knew how to play against it. They knew how to draft against it. The answer they had was Cho'Gath, and it worked out at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, after game one, I was a little concerned we were just going to be heading straight into a 2-0, but the Cho'Gath coming out made all the difference there. BOP able to win a game quite handily, too, once that Yone wasn't an issue. As we head into game three draft phase, it is going to be the Kai'Sa fan coming in from DLE. Seraphine back onto the board for Bop. The Yone first pick once again. Why not just pick Cho'Gath right now? Just, yep, there you go. It worked so well. Do it again. Yeah, you know, if it's not broke, you, there's no reason to try and fix it. The Cho'Gath did work wonders last time, but what also helped out a lot with that Cho'Gath pick was the fact that they did have the Kaisong cleanup duty, so that did a lot to get the HP bars low to enable the Cho'Gath uh, to just, you know, get a good snack out of a tease at the end of the day. Response out of DLE will be the Hecarim, however. Yeah, this will be the first difference in jungler we've seen from them this series. Um, you know, they've run the Olaf twice now. It's been quite effective. Um, the Hecarim has actually been banned away in game number two. And looking back, it was banned away in game number one as well. So this is something that BOP has had on their radar and has been a little concerned about. And there is good reason. As much as I personally am not a huge fan of the pick, it does numbers. It absolutely bangs in team fights. Having that AOE fear that could be so problematic, plus with the current build, paths we're seeing from the champion it does a grip of damage so there is good reason to be scared of this pick and it is actual. it is an actual initiator to combo with the oriana that they're picking for the third time in a row now yeah and not to mention what happens when you try and turret dive with the hecarim it is beautiful because they cannot see it coming it is so fast it's hard to respond to but you know just grab the rengar that is something that is also hard to respond to when you do pop that ultimate and the value you have from having that stealth and that surprise attack, the damage that can come through. We talked about it. It can be a bit feast or famine, but it is going to be the response for BOP as we head into the second phase of the draft. Yeah, so we're going to get four more bands here. I almost expect a Leona ban because if I'm thinking in my head, Durham Lords would love that champion right now it would do so well into that rengar plus it would take away that long range engage that bop had in the last map um so i think derm hordes really want that and i think bop need to respond to that um by either picking it uh with their first pick in the second half or banning it away right here they don't have that support locked in just yet um but so it, it makes the most sense to me it's a champion we've seen in two games now it's great it's useful it does everything you want it to do it has to be pick or ban here for bop so now the second phase of bands come again. Jin taking off the map as well as Fizz. And Alistair will be another one of those bands. So still looking around, you know, the Kaisa was banned out earlier. Um, AD Steve Cool will start to get pinched a little bit. DLE, they're not too worried about it. Saving that for the second half of the draft. 
Nine seconds left before they get their final ban in, and the counter pick will go over for BOP. Okay. They're going to ban away the Leona. Seen it picked way too many times, and hate the power of the engage that Leona can bring. Yeah, so now BOP, they need to adapt once again. Will they still go for that engage support? They do also need a mid laner. So far, they know that it's going to be the Orianna matchup, so they, they have that uh, information. I'm curious if they save that for the absolute last pick to get a full scope of how the composition of DLE wants to operate. Um, you are going to have the hook champion available. Uh, Nautilus, Thresh still on the board. Rel on the board Yay. as well. It's been banned away previously. I love this champion. It's so good. It breaks the shielding from the Yone and the Orianna. Um, it is going to break the Thresh shield as well if that is locked in. So pretty scary pick. That's a Thresh as always. He's good into everything, so he's going to have that flay opportunity plus the death sentence to really kind of be problematic for Rel. Yeah, so Thresh and Aphelios will be the bot lane for Durham. Uh, the Rel, I love it because it continues this this theme of just go hard if you're BOP. Press the gas pedal, continue the engagements, continue the fight, and Syndra continues that trend as well. The Unleashed Power Scatter of the Week, they are tools that bring so much damage, so much crowd control. They bring skirmish potential. Uh, the Rel ultimate works really, really well with the Leona, no, not the Leona, excuse me, the Misfortune ultimate as well. I've seen way too much Leona. So there <laughs> is so much to be scared of if you are DLE. But that being said, DLE do have some fight of their own. Yeah, they got the, you know, the 200 years of Philios. Uh, it has been kind of come and go in the meta. Um, you know, when Gale Force was incredibly strong at the 60 second cooldown, we saw it almost every game. Now that that's a 90 second cooldown, we've seen a little bit less of that champion. Um, I'm mm -hmm. curious if they do opt into the Immortal Shield Bow build, though, which has been buffed, does have that shield pop as well as the lifesteal on top of everything so it's a strong item in itself i think it would pair very well with the Aphelios, uh just because once you get that red white weapon combination if you drop a shield bow on top of that you're better than old school vladimir drain tanking your face off so <laughs> it'll keep you alive in the face of the shogath in case you do get caught out by the engage of the rel or the syndra the only big explosion there would be the rengar as we saw in game number one so there is a lot going on on both sides of these team fights, you have the same setup from game number two, where it's the Yone into the Cho'Gath, that feast always present, always going to be the get out of my face button there. However, this time they have more crowd control from the jungle position in the form of Hecarim. Again, we already talked about that onslaught of shadows. It is deadly in the right hands. Yeah, and Cho'Gath is not exactly the best at escaping situations. He can if you get a good enough rupture. But uh, the reason I bring that up is it's still a tease. It's still hectic. They're still very aggressive players. And if you are able to get a tease ahead, you pretty much get game number one. So I can imagine Hectic will be focusing a lot more towards that top end now that he has a champion that can enable him to set up tower dives and to set up kills onto this Cho'Gath before this Cho'Gath can get too much itemized. Yeah, and it, it does pose an interesting conundrum because Famous has been such a power sink so far in this mm. mid lane. The Oriana just, we have that highlight from game number one, but outside of that one highlight, we haven't seen a whole lot from the Oriana, Oriana pick. It's obviously a staple here for Famous. It's a comfort pick. It's blindable. It's safe to a degree. Um, you know, did lose in the mid lane last game into the Syndra matchup, but if the hectic Hecarim has to spend time in the mid lane, it is drawing attention away from these more important lanes of that Aphelios hyper carry of that Yone hyper carry. So hectic has to somehow keep the mid laner alive while giving kills to those side lanes. And do they have the capability? I definitely think so. I think this bo uh, bottom lane will be quite self-sufficient in the Aphelios thresh because if you get a great hook onto really either member of this BOP bottom lane, they're definitely killable. The only thing is if you get Rel when she has her W available, she'll be able to get out as long as she's not already in armor form. If she's in horse form, free escape, <laughs> armor form, bit less so. Yeah, so we're going to have to see how this plays out. There's definitely a lot of exciting things in this matchup when it comes to competitions, competitions, compositions even. I'm just slipping all my words right now, Don. <laughs> we are going to throw it over to a short break. When we return, we'll get into game number three of the Durham Lord Esports versus BOP. We'll be right back.
Ladies and gentlemen, Risen Esports Dominate League, Brotherhood of Peel versus Durham Lords Esports. And 1-1 one, one apiece, we are evened out. We had so much attention in the top lane last time, and still that attention is kind of there. The Yone versus Cho matchup part two, but this time we got a different jungle. We got the Clippity Cloppity, the Hecarum, to try and help out to tease up there in the top side. Yeah, it's a lot more confirmable than the Olaf, which only has that you know soft crowd control of the slow on the undertow does have some good damage that we saw kind of execute quite nicely with um the vicious strikes and the true damage which i'm at this reckless swing there we go um so it does have you know some damage hecarim though has damage plus displacement on the charge and the um onslaught of shadows ultimate both displacing and fearing you so you can get a lot more follow-up on an on-demand crowd control this time, whereas previously they were just kind of meandering around, hoping hoping that either there was a shockwave or the unsealed fate that won them a team fight. This time, though, they get a little bit of assistance there, and it's not down to just these solo winners. And, you know, I think Hectic just hates Flash as well. On the Olaf, he <laughs> took the uh, Ghost as well as the Hecarim. He's taking the Ghost, so just wants to be a fast boy at the end of the day, and... Hey, it works really well on the Hecarim. You can combo that with his Devastating Charge, which will amp up the damage a little bit. You're definitely going to need a lot of it if you do go over towards that top side, which I believe he will start pathing to. He is starting up on the red side, going to go straight to the Golem, so it's going to make him end towards the top side. And opposite for Derekos, who will be ending towards the bot side on his blue. Already, they're just going at it. The swing back and forth with these bot lanes. We saw it in game number two. It's what they like to do. They want to play aggressive lanes. They want to see whoever gets that level advantage first. You got to bully them out. They don't even need the level advantage. They just want the kit advantage. Yeah, that's the difference in these two champions. Had they had level two, that actually ends up in a kill for DLE because the flight into the tower would have just absolutely melted orange meatballs. So they take advantage of it when they have just the straight up one versus one or one level one versus level one advantage. So they crash the wave. They're setting themselves up because the jungler is nowhere near them. That is moving to the top side. So there's no gank threat currently. They're just going to be able to free farm away, you know, push this tower in a couple times, try and build up a little bit of an advantage. Just once again, random capitals is so good in this mid lane. Just absolutely thrashing famous for the third game in a row now. Yeah, poor famous. Random capitals keeps doing it. Keeps putting on the pressure and it's been working out for getting that early lane priority. Question is, what can they turn that lane priority into? We do need to see something more than just shoving in the wave because ultimately you are going to farm under tower. You are still going to be able to get all of that. But if you free up your mid laner, what can your mid laner do for you? It's a question that I always ask when you do see that jungler. It's death sentence comes out. Still just trades in the bot lane. Nothing to really be had in terms of a fight. Yeah, the flay mechanic, so good. How many times do we see supports come in and just not be able to do their thing because they got flayed backwards? It's incredibly strong. The champion always omnipresent. It's definitely the Oriana of the bottom lane where you can just pick it into almost any matchup and you know, be successful with it. Uh, it's great for those times you get autofill this support, which uh, Riot, I'm still having it happen. Please just turn autofill off already, please. I'm tired of it. Although, actually, I'm going to be honest, I get autofilled to jungle more often than anything these days. And jungle's such a strong role nowadays, too. I feel like it has the biggest impact out of any other of the lanes. And speaking of an impact, we might have that impact be transferred over towards the mid lane. As both Orange Meatball and Derekos are going to be eyeballing it very, very closely. They want a piece of the Orianna. The Scatter Week is going to start that off. The flash over the wall and the jump onto Famous. Get the damage in, but the tower shots are going through. You took a bad route, and Orange is going to fall, making this a one-for-one one in the mid lane. 
It is a kill onto both the mid laners though. And so far, history has shown us across these three games, Random Capitals is gonna get more done with that gold. Plus they got the first blood gold, getting themselves an extra hundred there on top of everything. So they're gonna be able to get the quick back from Famous. They get the teleport out as well. We'll have to see if Random Capitals walks it back or will teleport coincidentally as well. Evening up that advantage there. It seems to be like, oh, it's a walk back. So we may see a Teller play into this top lane once again, trying to punish Atiz's Yone. Right now, the wave not quite conducive to it, but everything else so far going quite nicely. They did see Hecarim on a ward, so they did ping out Hectic going towards his Krugs there. Bot lane is setting up for another wave crash on the side of Bop, but this time there is the threat of getting Hecarim game. And the threat of the Hecarim gank isn't the only thing to be worried about. A threat of a Rengar gank on the opposite side is... It, it could be very, very imminent, considering Orianna now has the flash down. Famous will not have that if he does get ganked on. And Scatter the Weak can provide a lot of power. But speaking of power, bot lane now. Here comes the charge onto Orange. Get him critically low and feed that kill over to Vic. Yeah, that's the problem of that rel. Once you don't have flash, once you've already used your W to engage, you're stuck. You are so trapped, it's ridiculous. And even using that Q there as famous falls once again, oh man, they're just going at it. Oh, Death it's rush. all I can't over keep track. the map. It's all over the map. DLE, they have something to say. They didn't take that loss lightly, so they're just trying to light up each and every one of these lanes. Yeah, just like Jordan, they took it personally and they're coming back with a vengeance and orange meatball coming back trying to make sure they're not caught out by anything tricky like that but the damage has almost been done already we're seeing kills go everywhere they need to aphelios yone some of the most hyper carry champions Ooh. but look at the teleport Ooh, a great use of the lantern and flay no. to stop that that was beautiful right there and what more can you say that clayson clayson you're living up to the reputation. Twitch chat's been going crazy about you. That's the type of plays that will make him go nuts. The Ignite was available for Meeple, though. The only reason Vic survives there is they got a full health heal out of their summoner ability. And watching it back onto the stream, Ignite was available that whole time. Meatball just didn't feel they needed to invest it. And unfortunately, it does cost them a kill at the end of the day. And so as we reset, we're going to get recalls coming in. First items slowly coming out. We're getting the Berserker Greaves completed here from Vic. So he's going to have that much more movement speed to try and play around the Rel, which kind of needs to be on top of you to really do anything. And speaking of the rel, the rel did pick up boots of her own, but in the top lane, a knock up onto a tease, forced to burn his flash to stay up, jumps back in. You don't want to go that way, but that was too danger. But pointing out those boots from Orange once again, it was just for the room to head over towards that mid lane, try and set up something onto Famous, who still doesn't have his flash up, but spent too much time there, won't find it, has to roam back. And it does mean that King Joe has been getting a lot of solo time in the lane. You can see them. They're level five to level four of their support versus like plays oh. who is also. Oh no. Ooh, a tease <laughs> almost. He almost got the kill right there. If he got the knockup, it certainly would have been killed on the Derekos, but just barely gonna whiff it. So both sides stay alive too, because Feast just became available. It is the level one Feast, so not the highest damage, but it, it's still a concern for a tease who was eaten quite a lot last game so that that continues to stay in the back of their mind i have to imagine and we do see level six now ticked over for king joe you know having all of that solo time means you get solo experience you get a little bit of an advantage we'll have to see if they can take advantage of it and get an engage here with that bullet time before vic completes their level six so shoving in trying to crash the wave yeah that bullet time can do a lot you just need Orange there. to really set this up here. Vic needs like two minions, I think, to hit six. But he's actually being quite uh, held out. He's nowhere near this minion wave. Uh, and all of that was just due to random capitals just walking out of the lane. Didn't even do like a full-on robe. They just went into the fog of war and this big wave is being set up. Hopefully, we do get Derekos down here. Is just over halfway completed with their ultimate cooldown, so... Six now hit for Victor. Hmm. With all the vision denied, it does seem like they're really worried about Derekos. 
So they're just backing off. They don't know where he is on the map. They think he's bot lane, and that's why Hectic is making the call to go after Harold right there. And, well, Derekos is over towards the spot side, but he's not exactly going for the gank right now, and Rift Harold will go over to Hectic. Yeah, once Meatball hits six, though, they have a pretty good dive composition here, as long as Meatball can land in the fray of things. Uh, they'll have this next mate, uh, next wave, excuse me. So they'll hit level six here. They are going to get the recall in from Derekos. Uh, the wave that they were building up all this time does just get melted here by Vic. So it is going to lessen that dive threat potential. Now we do get the recall in. Vamp Scepter now completed for Derekos. Going to be staying nice and healthy in these jungle clears. I, I am curious what their next move is going to be because we haven't seen a whole lot of action out of them. And so while they do have a bit of a CS advantage over their direct opponent, Hectic, it's not exactly um, thrilling to see them be so low tempo as the Rengar. And their composition as a whole, we really want to see more happen. If they want to find success, and yeah, I guess we're seeing it over towards the top side. Hectic will push him right out of that Rupster. Sheepman is caught out. The Creek, no paddle. Tease will be able to get the kill. No flash means no escape. 40 CS advantage on top of the two kills going the way of a tease. This is looking much closer to game number one than game number two. And we all know how that game went, unfortunately, for the side of BOP. Oh, they even have the Herald too. Do they have enough to take the tower is the question. If you get as much damage down before the, her the Herald actually charges, because otherwise those damage armor boosts just become so massive. Even with it, though, it looks like they have enough minions because that's a double wave. Actually, that, yeah, it's a double wave. So first brick should be going over to DLE. Huge advantage. Place him with the flay and the flash to keep himself safe. But death sentence on the orange. King is there and so is Derrico. So not willing to continue the engagement. Going golden is famous. It will keep him alive. Shockwave flashed out of one more orb to be dropped. It is there. It is on the mark. And Random Capitals will get the 1v1. Random Capitals has just been absolutely insane here in the mid lane all three games in a row we've seen them push tempo push advantage in their favor and it's such a power suck for dle in the mid lane for this series and unfortunately for them it is on this game changing oriana if it was something like a victor um, or maybe even something with a little bit less agency it wouldn't be so bad like if it was just like a farm into oblivion champion and now the engage trying to find derrickos Clayson almost getting the death sentence, will not find the mark, but it's enough to get control for DLE over on this dragon side. Yeah, dragon in four minutes, so it's just going to be the experience and the gold from the crab going over to Hectic uh, will expire before the next dragon, but taking it away from your opponent is nice. It also gives you a little bit of vision here, and with all of the roaming that Meatball has been doing, that is huge because it is going to give you a little bit more advanced warning if um, random capitals decides to start roaming a little bit it'll give you advanced knowledge there as well for the bottom lane which has been quite um, active even though the score lines don't reflect it so there is a ton of vision at <laughs> this bottom half of the map i want to point this out we have control wards from both teams <laughs> in the lower uh Bot in the lower bush of mid uh, we see three deep wards coming in from DLE into that front line of the jungle there we have an incredibly deep ward onto the raptors from BOP as well as Krugs so they are going to be seeing Hectic on the Krug camp now and there's just there's complete knowledge it is omnipresent might as well not even have a fog of war at this point on the bottom half of the map setting up for a gank over on the mid lane Derekos wants to find it a tease was willing to try and make him punished, but Derekos will walk away. And now a lot of setup going towards the mid lane as roaming back by his lonesome is going to be high big. Be back by himself, and it does look like he wants to shove in the wave because the idea here might be a tower dive. Yes, that is going to be it. Hyvik will throw out the ultimate, lands onto Joe. Here comes Hectic trying to clear the job, and Vic. We'll find the kill on the Joe. Picked up quite easily. A tease with the attack oh, onto no. the mid lane. Goes for the deep dive, but he's kind of by his lonesome there as the teleport gets burnt. Sheep Man will show up in the bot lane as well. Orange all too late for his ADC. A tease somehow survives that. I'm kind of shocked at that considering they were knocked out from under one tower into another tower and taking tower shots from both. But they survive with the Immortal Shield Bow proccing, but that bottom lane 
Great play from Vic, using the ultimate to get the initial Gravitum down. There was just enough damage to kill King Joe very quickly, even through the heal being burned. And they take a couple tower shots, but the teleport comes through from Sheepman. It's just not enough. It was too late. King Joe had no chance of surviving there. I think I would have liked to see them save that teleport even, just because, like I said, it is so low chance that they survive. Great flash from Matisse to stay alive. Sheepman has their flash, but hectic. Should be able to keep their friend alive, maybe even kill Sheepman, who's not tanky whatsoever. Yeah, swinging away at Sheepman. Sheepman forced to just back off. Hectic will be able to get the bully there, and Otis gets to keep his life. He does get the recall and be able to get another good purchase in, and at a good time as well, because we're a minute and 15 away from this Drake, and it is going to be an Infernal Drake. This is definitely a team fight timer. Yeah, and, you know, when you look across the board, ultimate's going to be available slash for pretty much everybody. The question will be if Vic has theirs left or up and available. I believe they will, since it does seem to be a couple of short seconds away and it's still a full minute from the dragon. Um, and this could completely blow the game open. If we get another big fight where uh, Derekos can pick up a bunch of kills again, like we saw in game number two, then that swings back in their favor whereas if conversely a tease picks up a bunch of kills then it's going to be game one versus game two and so the dragon 30 seconds left you if you needed to back you should have done it already if you're sitting on a ton of gold you did a disservice to your team not using it as i'm looking at the gold chart we're seeing 1100 there on famous versus 900 there on vic whereas when you look over to the side of bop everybody's under 800 gold they've spent their credits they've spent their dollars to be as strong as possible for this next fight so this is this is not the end of times since it's just second dragon for both teams but it could could uh what's the word? shape the next couple minutes Ooh. <laughs> and getting shaped is going to be clayson but only shape he's going to be put into is a coffin now starting up the drake is bop and they should be able to get it quite easily the attention of dle is going to be the mid lane as they put down shelly get the charge onto the tower and clear out the tower and that will be the trade they're very happy taking that an interesting yeah, I... trade to say the least yeah it gold wise favors dle which i think they're feeling a little concerned from game two that they need to be scaling a bit faster because of they, they know where sheepman will end up eventually and they know that the rest of the team will start to come online as well obviously it's not a kaisa level from the 80 carry position you know king joe is on this misfortune now so it's not as scary but the rest of the team can be quite terrifying so they need to scale faster and they realize that this third dragon this one single infernal drake isn't what is going to get them to that hyperscaling position it's the gold from the mid tower the damage on the tier two as well so it's a calculated risk i think clayson dying had a bit to do with it but we'll just do it again that was nice that was beautifully executed that's all you can really say about that king joe removed from the map and this will put dle in a good spot to be able to siege up this tower and take out the final outer tower that's been plaguing them just off of one swift play yeah and we're starting to see the downside of leaving King Joe by themselves for so much. Yes, they have this experience and gold advantage, but in terms of, you know, survivability, you're seeing where the downside is. I mean, yes, Rel was having a bit of a rough time in that lane. They weren't able to engage as freely as they wanted, but now it's the opposite problem. King Joe is just getting freely engaged upon time after time as Hectic is now 1-0-3 with the Divine Thunder completed. And able to jump out from the bushes onto Vic, getting a huge chunk of damage onto him. Real the Hunt is used and the target once again. Vic, can he get there? He doesn't have his support. Clayson, you need it to provide the flay for your ADC. Teleport comes in. Atiz joins the fray. Tries to get the knockup. Can't find it. Unleash power goes out. And so does the bullet time. Sheepman sees a mill. He's going right after Clayson. But ultimately, this is the squad right here. BOP finding their marks, finding the team fight, finding a win. And now setting up for the mid lane, looking to chase down the famous as well. Scatter the Week finds his mark, but so does Shockwave. And Sheepman around the corner. Famous realizing he took a wrong step. will use the blast plant to get himself back to safety. But ultimately, BOP taking down the mid lane tower. I thought the dragon was going to be the explosion point, but it turns out just 
random scuttle crab plays are gonna be the dozen great combo there from meatball and derrickos the initial fight almost took down vic they needed to use just a little bit more in terms of the throw of the hunt and everything else to follow it up afterwards but they do eventually get the kill and then the rest of the team is in a perfect position we get teleports coming in from multiple members here both Atiz and famous trying to join the fight and it sees joints pops into going ghost tries to use the unseal fate to get a massive play out of the rest of the team and he completely whiffed it hits zero members of bop and so at that point the counter engage is just free real estate random capitals is such an animal on this syndra 4 0 and 2 plus you have the bullet time from king joe across multiple members just tons of damage and the tanky stats of dle just simply aren't there yet and the immortal shield bow wasn't enough to keep a tease alive long enough to get any meaningful damage down and one of the things that hurt me in that last fight is thresh can work as a very viable counter for rengar you can get the flay while Rengar is jumping in. Clayson needs to stand on top of Vic and be ready for such a thing because you can't just let him fall like that. Aphelios is supposed to be your late game oh, no. condition, but here comes a tease under the tower. It gets the shutdown onto Capitals. Styles on him. Oh, so quickly. Doesn't even need to land the ultimate, just has plenty of damage with the basic abilities. And it was crazy that the knock up from his Q actually misplaced where his ultimate was going to connect so stuff like that could be a bit concerning if you're really going to nitpick a player but he gets the kill anyway massive shutdown on top of it 750 gold to the yone who was already feeling themselves and now have a completed infinity edge going into their third item here dragon in 30 seconds is going to be a pincer point once again and so far i don't know who's going to win desrox i simply cannot tell both teams have had really strong team fights go their way and both have had the opposite happen this dragon is up for grabs completely yeah, Doc, we're at a state of the game where you're going to start seeing DLE turn on more and more. They do have a bit of a late game composition that feels really well. And you're going to start to see BOP falter. That being said, they have they still have some great team fight having the combo of the Rel Ultimate with the bullet time. But that's a condition that you need set up for you. You need the team to be put into a bad position where that can be successful. And when it's situations like that, it doesn't look that good for you if you are BOP. You still have your power point though. This is still not that late into the game. You're still online. You can still take fights. They just need to be very swift about it and continue building that gold lead. And there's the battle line drawn. It's time for a dragon fight. Infernal has been pulled. Yeah, and you can already see the ball from Oriana is sitting on a tease. They're setting up for that unsealed fate shockwave play. They're, that's the game plan right now. It's what they have in their back pocket. And they're not shy about showing it. They already put the ball down. That is the play. Oh, here comes the attack of Tease. Doesn't even get two seconds in that fight. Shockwave goes out, but it's only onto the support at the top laner, and they're happy to tear away at the health bars of DLE. Famous goes golden. Derricos jumps back in and slays them. Hectic tries to run away, tries to make for the hills, but he's got two beefy sticky boys on him, and they will destroy him for the ace, only losing capitals in the process. Man, I don't know what happened from DLE. They just were like, hey, we're super strong. We'll just we'll just W key at him. Who needs to actually play around the abilities from BOP? And, you know, we saw the he the Oriana ball onto a tease and they didn't pop Ghost. They didn't pop the ultimate. They didn't do anything other than just run into the back line and expect something to happen. And whether it was famous not hitting the buck bu button quick enough or it was just they underestimated the damage from the backline of BOP. Either way, Shockwave didn't get onto the backline. It was used onto the two, you know, Bruiser Bros of uh, Sheepman and Meatball. And they're so tanky already that it doesn't really do a whole lot. They're forced off the Baron, which is nice. This is a bit risky, but I do think they will have the damage between the Kraken Slayer and the no. Shield, though. I, I think they can do it. It's a little slow, but... I, it's going to happen. I, yeah, it should be fine. They're getting it. There's no way Derekos can get there in time. It's falling to 3,000 health. The counter Baron from DLE is going to be successful, and there it is. A swift play made, but BOP, they have a response. They're going for the engage. Shockwave is only landing onto the top laner. Derekos is able to get into the fight onto the back lane as the Onslaught of Shadows goes through. A oh. tease! The fate is sealed! Here comes DLE as they wipe the floor with B.O.P.
everything falling apart here for BOP. They had the play. They tried to get more than they could, though. Their, their mouth was too big for their feast, and unfortunately, it bites them back. Everything the DLE has been building up to from this point, a tease once again, the $4 million top laner bringing them across the victory line, and they're gonna get a lot off of this. Not only do they get the Baron, they get the Ace, they get the Inhibitor. They might push for victory, but with Famous being so low and the rest of the team not feeling strong enough, they're gonna fall away, but you cannot ask for a better team fight from them. That was beautiful. That was commitment right there. Everyone knew the call. They made it as a group and they committed to it as a group. Once the engagement was done from BOP, it, it, it was seeming almost like disaster for a moment because Famous used the shockwave. It only landed on the Sheepman, but a tease beautifully goes after the back line and wipes the floor with them. And now DLE, they're in prime position to take this map by storm. They have so much control. They have so many resources. They have a late game composition. This could be DLE's game. Yeah, we actually see an ultimate from Matisse this time, which was the game breaking moment at that last dragon, right? Like they didn't use the ultimate whatsoever. So there was no hard crowd control or damage explosion onto the back line. This time though, they're able to use it. They don't shoehorn themselves into a fate sealed shockwave combination. They play it a little bit more free form using that shockwave to keep Sheepman out of the fray. And everything at that point just came together beautifully. A tease, no longer that squishy Yone we saw in game number two that was always being feasted upon. Sheepman just hasn't had the same level of game. They're two, three, and five to converse the three, two, five of a tease. And with this Baron buff, they're continuing to get objective after object objective. And now, yeah, it gets stolen away, but they'll, they'll have another one in just a second in terms of cannon minions. And this is looking incredibly tough for BOP. This could still be anyone's fight. If you dive in and you don't get Joe, the bullet time can destroy the back and front line. So you got to be very careful of your DLE. You're not that far ahead considering the game state right now. But having that Baron Empowered push, guiding in those minions into the mid lane as well with that Baron Empowered push, it is looking good for them. Still have a lot of momentum on their side. Yeah, and we did get the Moonline visual just out of Vic there. He was trying to land the Gravitum onto a couple members to see if they could get another big team fight going. But they have the Kraken Slayer, the Rune and Hurricane. They're already using their 150 years. They're building up to the 200 years as the fight comes in. Here we go. The hook's going to land onto Capitals. The Shockwave going through. Bullet time is thwarted by Hectic, who's able to stop it. How far is far too low for the Brotherhood as they're just a triple kill a Felios is online there is the ace and there is your victory the two carry stand troll famous Vic you are victorious in this game for DLE are they <laughs> taking their time with it somebody might actually respawn at this rate but 20 seconds on Derek Coast, 15 on to meatball this like you said Desirex should be it Maybe. Actually, this is actually happening really slow. They might actually be okay, forced yeah. away. Uh, uh, but, I mean, it, the great last team fight. I mean, amazing uh, stuff there. You had the great hook coming uh, in from Jason. Yeah, no, they're good. They're uh, there he is. <laughs> He's angry. He wants to do it. Uh, can he? Can he? Can he stop him? Uh, it's low. And, yep, they are able to clean it up. For a moment, I was second guessing. I Yeah, I once they weren't, like, immediately out of the towers, I was like, oh, man, this, this is looking shaky. But, again, <laughs> amazing final team fight coming there they had just that extra bit of crowd control from the hecarim which was so influential in a lot of different moments this time specifically interrupting that bullet time which removed so much damage from that bop composition and even though atiz didn't really do much that last team fight he had given enough room for the rest of the team to come online that you know we saw the 200 years from vic coming out they landed tons and tons of auto attacks that carried them on through and hectic once again another a great showing from the jungle position a great showing indeed he definitely had enough early influence to make sure his team didn't fall too far behind and oh man that was really back and forth i i, I did get kind of scared for dle in that one especially after seeing that one shockwave that we saw at the baron fight it, it, it looked like the smart call 
they they made the Baron. They said, hey, they don't have any vision here. They just backed off. Uh, let's try it. Let's see what happens. They made the smart call. They grabbed it. It didn't look like they had the team fight for a second, but a tease, a tease and hectic. They just completely make that backline absolutely nothing but chaos for the Brotherhood to have to deal with. And ultimately, you got to give them a pat on the back for what they were able to do for their team. Yeah, and they get to keep their, you know, completely 3-0 streak alive. They do now have a bounty on their heads compared to the rest of the league. And, you know, that one just over extension from the Brotherhood of Peel Academy just really, really threw them for a loop there. The Baron play, it wasn't necessary. They they completely overcommitted originally and secondarily once they realized the Baron had already fallen. After the Baron falls, I think they should have just fallen away, regrouped, replanned, come up with a new idea. But Either way, end of the day, it is going to be 2-1 in favor of Durham Lords Esports. And it was a hard-fought one. That was not easy by any means. It was definitely a hard-fought one. They are able to advance to a 3-0 scoreline in this tournament. And unfortunately, Brotherhood going to the 1-2. That being said, it's competitive. It was a very competitive series. This is no indicator of how far uh, their skill is when it comes to the standings uh, that matchup was a pretty clear indicator at the end of the day uh, overall hats off to Durham Lords Esports and that's pretty much going to do it for the desk doctor any closing statements brother no I just want to give a shout out for Risen Esports for having us on here and giving us this platform to watch all these amazing games right those were absolute bangers and definitely shout us to chat for hanging out with us for the night I know that you could have watched 100 Thieves or Cloud9 but here at Risen Esports, we know what the show really is. So thank you for them. Give a shout out to our producer, J Dogging, for keeping us on air for the entire time as well. And yeah, shout out to Destrex for joining me here. I know it was a bit of a last minute fill in, but I think you killed it, man. Yeah, thank you guys all for joining us. Thank you, Doctor. For the casting desk, my name is Eric Desrox Beltran. Of course, my co-caster, Michael the Doctor Parati. We want to thank you and we'll see you next time here on Risen Esports.
Not a big house.